when Dame was late. Y'all, I'm straight out of high school. Been on the post of good since 1986. Old school. I'm bringing you a laid back summertime jam. Hold on a minute, Link. Hey, what's up, old man? I see that you're embarking on another epic quest. You're gonna use your ocarina to rescue the princess. But you'll need a magic weapon that'll never ever miss. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this! Oh, thanks, old man. That is really very nice. I can always count on you for help and friendly advice. Though I've never seen a sword of quite that shape or size. Oh, God, that's not a sword. It's your dick in disguise. Yes, I can lie. I have painted my shoe. Now grab your destiny. That was weird, but whatever, there is no time to lose. I got a warp right now to Zelda in this chilled out group. Wait, this isn't Kenneth's lair. I'm a Liberty City. This place looks just like Philadelphia, but even more shit. I'm at the corner of Dead Cotton Prostitute Junction. Something in my ocarina must have gone and malfunctioned. I gotta fix it quickly, there is justice to do. Hold on a minute, Link. Oh, man, is that you? This is a place you can't survive with just a sword in your wits. It's, it's dangerous to go alone, take this. Well, that's really kind of dad yeah, that's your wrinkle dick again. Look, I know I'll wear a tunic, but I'm not in demand. Don't be that way, bitch. Let me introduce you to my three best friends, Mr. Johnson and the Juice Crew. If you see the princess, tell the well, you know you're gonna grab her. So why don't you try and come grab my little jab? Oh my god! I gotta walk out of here, Princess Zelda. I must have beaten Ganondorf before it gets too late. Okay, now I really don't know where I am. Hold on a minute, Link. God damn it, old man! You're in Raccoon City. It's a zombie abyss. It's, it's dangerous to go alone, team. No! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm not giving you a not touching your wit! Stop the chilled out crew! Jeez! Come in here telling me you got a wee wee weapon! It's not cool! I'm not gonna touch it! I'm not gonna No! So was that a no on the hand job or okay
Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to the stream, welcome to an un, an unplanned tie-in to the new episode of the Beardy Bunch today. Um, so I did not plan this, but we released a new episode of the Beardy Bunch today, as we do every week. Um, and it's all about visual novels. We talk about visual novels and favorite visual novels and all that good kind of stuff. Um, and I didn't even realize I had Dream Daddy play, planned for today, which is a visual novel. So it's unintentionally a tie-in to our, our weekly episode of the Beardy Bunch podcast. How's everybody doing tonight? I see Katie. Katie, thank you so much for hanging out in between, not only in between classes, but while you're doing your hair and makeup. That means so much to me, Katie. Thank you so much. And we got Sleepy. Sleepy, how you doing, my friend? Yes, I'm going to... Give me, give me a hot sec, and I'm going to talk about the community challenge. We got a new community challenge um, in, under your channel points. Uh, I also see Ziggy. Ziggy, how you doing, my friend? How have you been? I haven't seen you in a little bit. How have you been doing? Oh, I'm not close. I don't want these to get stale. Uh, how have you been doing, Ziggy? But yes, we have, if you click on your, your channel points down in the, the bottom left-hand side of the chat, you'll see a brand new community challenge i was gonna wait until april or april god august 1st uh to launch it 
and start saving and start amassing channel points for it. But I decided, what the hell? What the hell? We'll launch it. We'll launch it today. Oh, Dream Daddy's a fantastic game. This is a fantastic game. It doesn't it doesn't matter what what side of the spectrum you fall on or what where wherever on the spectrum you fall. This is just a fantastic game in general. Um, I also didn't realize that I wore my Taiga Pride shirt. <laughs> I just threw it on because it was the next thing in the drawer. I, I had no, I had, I had not, I didn't plan any of this. I'm just unintentionally lucky. I don't know. Uh, you're doing swell. Hell yeah, Ziggy. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. It's all coming together perfectly. Exactly. Um, but the community challenge, the community challenge, I'm going to do things a little bit differently for this one. So... The community challenge is the first, the first major expansion to the channel stream loot. I'm going to add a brand new deck to our stream loot packs that will be the chaos deck. It will be exclusively action cards, things that you can play to like fuck with what I can do in game. Uh, and they're going to be brutal. Well, some of them are going to be brutal um, to give context to how brutal this new pack's gonna be um the action cards that are considered epic in the main pack right now would be considered common in in the chaos deck and i'm gonna do things a little differently as in as we're raising points as we're raising points i'm gonna be adding cards so once we hit twenty-five thousand channel points donated the the final the final total is uh, 150,000, which is the same as what we did for Chat Writes a Story. We hit it in like half half the time. We hit it in like two weeks. It was fantastic. Oh, I do like I do like the anime Ziggy. What uh what gave it away? <laughs> what gave it away? Is it the is it the anime pop figures? The manga? <laughs> oh hell yeah, Sleepy. There's the first the first contributor. Sleepy, you got bragging rights as the first contributor. The first contributor to the chaos deck. Um, so as we amass points at the end of each stream, so the chaos deck is gonna have a hundred, a hundred unique cards in it um, that are all gonna be actions. I haven't fully planned what they're gonna be yet. Oh, uh, do I see pack four sleepy? Um, I haven't fully planned what they're they're gonna be yet, but there's gonna be a hundred cards in the pack. And I have a breakdown of how I'm going to release the cards. Um, so once we hit 25,000 points contributed, we're, I'm going to release the first 10 cards. At 50,000 points, I'm going to release another 20 cards. At 75,000 points, I'm going to release another 10 cards. And then for every and for every 25,000 up, I'm going to release another 20. So 100,000, another 20, 125,000, another 20. And then the last 20 at 150,000 channel points contributed. So realistically, we could have part of this deck. Yes. If I didn't sell your soul. Hey, no worries, Sleepy. No worries, because it's going to be worth it. I will say I'm going to make... There'll be two redemptions. One for... The base pack's not going anywhere. So the pack that's there now is not going anywhere. Um, the chaos packs are going to cost more channel points unfortunately i mean they're gonna be you're gonna be able to do more with them you're gonna be able to probably make my life a living hell so they're gonna cost more channel points but they're gonna they're gonna cost the same amount of money so if you want to buy packs they're gonna be the same amount of money as the regular packs so um will they destroy for more that's the other thing is they're not gonna be craftable None of them are going to be craftable because that's how severe these are going to be. I don't want people amassing like hundreds of them. Um, you'll be able to able to destroy them for a lot, but you won't be able to craft them. I can make them destroyable for for quite a bit, and you'll be able to use them to get stuff in the regular pack. They won't be craftable though, so you won't be able to craft. Um, uh, you won't be able to craft the cards in there. But if you save up your point, your channel points, you'll be able to buy packs. Um, and they're going to be, like I said, they're going to be like 10 times more brutal than the stuff in the regular pack. And there's not going to be any of the any of the fluff, the like gift cards or the sound cards or any of that stuff. Um, it's going to be all actions all day. So you're going to be gearing. When you buy a pack, 
you're going to be guaranteed three actions um, whether they be you know whatever rarity you'll be guaranteed those three actions so all your craft 100% of the cards and 50% of the time if there's a limited count yeah so these uh, I do use OBS Ziggy I do use OBS I really like OBS I'm not a big fan of Streamlabs OBS I use regular OBS uh, destroy yes so you'll be able to destroy them I'll make them worth quite a bit so you'll be able if you don't if you want to destroy them and use them for stuff in the other pack you'll be able to um, but they won't be you won't be able to craft them with your with your with your diamonds yep OBS studio OBS studio all right so let um I'll, I'll talk like if you have questions about about the chaos pack or about the community challenge or anything Feel free to ask them. I'm going to jump into the, I'm going to pause Spotify and I'm going to jump into the game because we got, we got some daddies, the romance, we got some daddies, the romance, and we haven't played this in a while. Uh, so I don't remember, I don't remember exactly where we are, but, um, I'm going to put my romance into your hands again, chat. You've got dads. I, f I honestly don't remember what we were doing. Okay. We got a, we got a new message. From Craig. I remember I don't like Craig. Hey dude, I've got the runs. Oh, I've got this I've I've got just the thing. I also don't remember what voice I gave anybody. Also, let me get chat's on the wrong side of the screen. Let me let me switch where chat is on, on OBS. Cause I was I had you on the other monitor yesterday. Brian was Billy. Yes, Brian was Billy. I'll I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake cherry licorice and a book of word jumbles that I find useful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? But I've got the runs. By the I've got the runs, I meant that I feel like running. <laughs> Want to come to the gym? No, I never want to go to the gym. <laughs> Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man. It'll be fun. You know what? Sure. Oh, no. When are we Sweet? doing this? What There's the 30 more minutes left that? in this meat hell marathon. Sleepy! If your unlucky diarrhea runs in your gene... Oh, we did this already, Sleepy. <laughs> we did this yesterday. <laughs> Don't you remember, Sleepy? You pulled this joke yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he's got the runs. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. At least let me see if if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get her 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 soap prasada. So Prasada wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. Uh, do we want to go running with Craig or do we want to romance some other dads? Chat, what do we want to do? These are all the dads we can romance. Or we can go running with Craig. But we all know how I feel about Craig. I forget, did we, did we romance Robert once last week? Not last week. Oh god, it's been like two months since we played this. <clears throat> I can't remember, I think we did? I know we, we romanced Billy once. Uh, I don't think we've even talked to Damien. Uh, Craig, we have not romanced, oh, have we romanced Craig? Oh, you know what? I think I think we did romance Craig because we went to like a little league game or something. Uh, we've romanced Matt once. Oh, Hugo's my boy. We've romanced Hugo twice, so if we do Hugo again, it's it's GG. Um, mm, let's let's romance Damien. Let's romance Damien because we haven't we haven't really even talked to Damien.
Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Jude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Uh oh. <laughs> I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter, for as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a generous, a gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you, till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several, t several more times. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Aww. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back, back pimples. No, no, can you interpret this for me? Eh? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with, you, with each other now? <laughs> oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Yeah. Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming de debutant ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Uh. Or our dowry. Yeah. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things you know about about it back to me, aren't you? Huh. Like the first pa the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still got a B though. Ooh, a Rosalia. <gasps> I love Rosalia. Great. So what do I say to Damien? <laughs> I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Right. Jay. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Forget about my crazy eyes. How did I forget about my crazy eyes? Uh, also, I'm in the middle of the text. Let me move myself here for a hot sec. Let me move myself up here. Where I'm not in the way of all the text. There we go. There we go. Now I'm only in the way of that one window on the right. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor. A state. The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, look at the dog. Oh, hang on, I'm blocking the dog. Everybody needs to see the dog. Look at that, look at that pooch. Look at that pooch. What him, he's lovely. What a good, what a good pupper. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Wait, do we just let ourselves in? Huh, hello? Silence. 
An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Oh, so why does Damien have fossils? Jay, my pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. That's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Ah. Oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked. Ah. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the, and the creepy oil paintings. Mm. I like oil paintings. Right. Ah. Right. Wow, we're off, to a, we're off to a real bad start with Damien. <laughs> Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. <laughs> Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Oh. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly very proud of this room. Uh, oh. Oh, let's I'll pick up a book. I like books. You know, Jay, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels were encouraged would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Ah. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his his ninja pants. Did we just did we just stumble upon Damien's secret stash of fan fiction? Is that what is that what just happened? We just found Damien's stash of fanfic. Just Naruto fanfic. Ah! Okay, I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. Uh, got the window? I walk to the window and, and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughter on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one- Oh no, he wanted us to go running with him! Damn. Did you know that Victorian spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out the full-length windows? Oh no, Ziggy, why are you scared? Don't be- don't be scared of the- of the Naruto fanfic. You gotta- you gotta embrace it. <laughs> you gotta embrace that Naruto fanfiction. You just gotta- you gotta hold it deep down in your soul. I mean, we essentially wrote fan fiction for Chat Writes a Story. Also, wait, oh, hang on. I haven't looked at, I haven't looked at our uh, our Chat Writes a Story post in a while. But what was the, what was the website we posted that on? Um, oh crap, I forget what that website was. I haven't looked to see if we got any more comments. Uh, oh, here, here's the link. All right. Let's see, did we ever get... We've got 16 views and two comments, and one of them's us, so we didn't get any more... Sorry, chat. We didn't get any more comments on our story. Um, 16 people looked at it, though. <laughs> I completely forgot about our story for a while. Sorry, no new comments. 
Wait, really? Uh. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. I walk up to the glass display of pin bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Uh. I pin them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Hmm. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Hmm. No. Uh. Please, will you join me for tea? Sure. I follow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Hmm. Damien smiles to himself. What? How delightful. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they are served. Oh. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. David's kind of a dick. <laughs> I come right out and say, Damien's kind of a dick. <laughs> Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me his tiny sandwich. Oh, I do like tiny sandwiches. <laughs> like your cape. Oh, that was the right choice. Oh, it really seems like you're... It seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place. The... Thank you. Hmm. No one has ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and sh pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Uh. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Uh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Oh no! <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Of course. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it, Katie. <laughs> but it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> oh. Never mind, maybe we're kind of a dick. <laughs> On second thought. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting, collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Hmm. I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. <sighs> I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. Uh. But I think it takes a critical mind to appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Hmm. Tell me, Jay. Do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do. But I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Uh -huh. Well, I do love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Oh. Well, Damien's already into us. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Uh, <laughs> I love watching soap uh, soap making videos on the internet. Love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle. Oh, he's gonna love that. He's gonna love that we we know how to juggle. Oh oh, he didn't like that at all. Uh oh, I fucked up chat. I fucked up. Gravity is an interesting thing, and um, I believe that juggling is the pinnacle of humankind's interaction with the gravitational arts. Huh. Interesting. I started out with scarves, 
but now I can comfortably juggle balls. Juggling pins is currently, um, out of my purview. Hmm. Damien looks at me quizzically, but shrugs it off. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Oh, what's he gonna show us, chat? <gasps> Ooh, that's really cool. Ooh. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in, beautiful, in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Hmm. Thank you. Uh. Victorians took flowers and flor floral arrangements very seriously. Oh. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Hmm. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Ah. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a vine. Hmm. Lilium Bulbifirum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? What is it? What are we trying to catch? Do you want to what, explain what? Ex explain, explain what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why? Well, I, I, where did the Book of Sacrifice come from? It was in my inventory. Oh, I don't keep the Book of Sacrifice on me twenty four seven. No, <laughs> I keep it in the in the Chamber of Sacrifices in Minecraft. Uh, do you like the uh, Do you like the cauldron I added to the the Chamber of Sacrifices? Yeah, it's in the chest. Because I don't want to I don't want to like drop it underground and not be able to get back to it. <laughs> yeah, there's like a hole in the ceiling you can drop down into the cauldron, so we can... Oh, hell yeah, Sleepy, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But yeah, the cauldron, there's a hole in the ceiling that you can just drop the sacrifices down in through, into the cauldron. It's it's very elaborate. It's a very elaborate plan. Oh, it's a sunflora. I love sunflora. My loins are ablaze. Uh... Uh, sure, my, my loins are ablaze. Uh-oh, he didn't like that. The or- Oh, I was trying to predict what the, what the, the orange lily meant. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Uh-oh. Well. Oh. And that's precisely, precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Uh-oh. Oh, I love hun I love sunflowers. They remind me of sunshine. And then you can eat the seeds as a delicious snack. Furry Lolitas! How you doing, my friend? Welcome! Welcome! How you doing? How was work yesterday? If I remember correctly, you were headed off to work when I talked to you yesterday. Good morning to you, too. I'm not- I'm not 100% sure where you're at, Furry Lolitas. Where are you that it's- it's morning, if you don't mind saying. If you don't, of course, if you don't mind saying. What a practical choice. Oh, you're on the, oh, it's, it's not morning. <laughs> Still, good morning. I mean, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to wish anyone a good morning when they want a good morning. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Sleepy's on the West Coast also. <laughs> I am a little bit in the future because I'm on the East Coast. East Coast represent. My stomach rumbles. Aw oh, man, now I want sunflower seeds. <laughs> I have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He, you would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Jay, would, will you excuse me? I must take this. 
Yeah, well, Katie, Katie's even further in the future. Katie's a whole day in the future from us. I'm in the future from Sleepy and Furry Lolitas. You're in the future from everybody, Katie. Yet, where are those lottery those lottery numbers, Katie? Where are they? <laughs> we could be millionaires by now. He pulls out a cell a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised that it it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. You can you can look them up on the internet, Katie. You can just do a quick Google search from the future. Do a quick Google search from the future and take a screenshot. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. It is four, four fifty-eight and and sixty-nine. Nice, nice. <laughs> I always pick sixty-nine. All of the zero times that I've ever played the lottery. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the hydrate. I really appreciate that. Doesn't Gene love rotary phones? Gene probably does love rotary phones. I think rotary phones are pretty cool, to be completely honest. I think they're pretty cool. I would have one as, like, a conversation piece. Oh, hey. A gargoyle. Oh, no. I knocked over the gargoyle. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we knocked over... Chat, we knocked over the gargoyle. Run! Oh, no, we gotta fix the gargoyle. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, we got a time limit. Oh, wait. No, no, that's the head. Uh oh no no that's the head. Uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh oh no no I need that one that's the one no is it is it not the one uh oh uh oh chat uh oh I don't know how to fix the gargoyle uh oh uh oh uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. We're gonna be in trouble with Daddy Gene. Or not Daddy Gene, Daddy Damien. Oh, you can flip him! Fuck, you can flip him. I didn't know you can flip him. That's the wrong one. No, 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 no. It's, you gotta flip it, and then, there. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. 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 Oh, that was freaking stressful. Holy crap. Oh. Oh, I thought Daddy Damien was going to be mad at us. <laughs> I am now. I am now that the, the statue's successfully back together. Damien will never know that we broke the gargoyle. Ooh, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. He would have been even more upset if we hadn't fixed the gargoyle. Jay, my sincerest apologies to have to ke have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm su I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post-haste. Do you need help? Oh, no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Huh. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would have greatly treasured having another parent by my side. <laughs> Some explain Wait, what do I have explaining to do? <laughs> I fixed it. It's okay. The gargoyle's fixed. Damien never needs to know. It's our secret. We're two that's right, we're two percent in. How many how many points do we uh how many points do we officially have? Uh three thousand five hundred and forty four. Don't forget at twenty five K we launch the first ten cards in the chaos pack of Stream Loots. So at at 25,000 channel points contributed. Oh shit, Furry Lolitas, thank you so much for that contribution. Hell yeah, thank you so much. Kay, welcome. How you doing, Kay? How are you today? Let's go. 
Hmm. Okay, we're romancing some daddies. We're romancing all the daddies all the time. You have zero points. Oh, for elitist. I'm sorry. It'll be worth it, though. Um, so I don't know if you were here earlier when I went through the explanation for the community challenge. Um, I think you know about stream loots because we, we have this thing called stream loots that does all kinds of cool stuff with the stream. Um, and I'm launching a new deck of stream loots once we complete the community challenge. Actually, throughout the community challenge. So at uh, 25,000 points, I'm going to drop the first 10 cards into the chaos deck. Which the chaos deck is all actions. It's all stuff that you can make me do to make my gameplay more difficult for me. Um, your parents... We, we, we still have a landline, Katie. I still have a landline in my house. Is that, is that uncommon? I very rarely use it, but we still have a landline. Yeah. We don't have, like, rotary phones. We have those little wireless ones that you put in the receiver. But we have a we have a landline. That's bonkers. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Daddy Hugo's going to know we're spending time with Damien. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I think we're I think we're all here for the dad bods. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. <sighs> hey Damien, you're here in record time. I wouldn't I wouldn't miss it for wait, this is my voice. What voice did I give? I think I gave all the dads the same voice. Fuck. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the my kids are in trouble, Rodeo. Mm. What is it this time? Oh. This! Damien, you have to see it to believe it. Start your D&D &D with your nieces, and you're the DM. Oh, okay. Okay, you can make, you can make their life a living hell. <laughs> Just here for support. I had an hour break in between classes, and oh. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I need support to help me romance these daddies. I need support, or otherwise we're not going to have any daddy action. Wait, I should work for UPS. I know how to handle a packet. Oh, sleepy. <laughs> oh, sleepy. Also, is that a pack for Katie? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's get Katie a pack of stream loot. Here you go, Katie. You got a pack headed your way, courtesy of Kay. I didn't miss any other redemptions, did I? I didn't. Okay. There's some glizzies to romance. I would romance all the glizzies. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridor of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into, into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement. And they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. Why are we going into the basement of the school? What are, what's about to happen to us, chat? <laughs> You're helping with my zinc room. Hell yeah, Sleepy. Thank you so much. It's almost done. It just needs a roof on it. Wait, what have I done? him do the exact opposite of what you say what no 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 katie i listen to you i listen very intently to everything you say so the next thing you tell me to do i'm gonna do the exact thing you say okay just for you katie we find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement with him are lucian and ernest hugo's son lucian has a bloody nose oh are they get in a fight Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Huh. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. What? The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. 
Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontillado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him. What's, uh, what's cask of Amontillado? Oh, see, this is not, this is not accurate. Clearly, cask of Amontillado is the Edgar Allan Poe short story. Come on, endgame, Jay Chili. Come on. What did I miss? Yes, you listen. And then, no, no, Katie, the next thing you tell me to do, I'm going to do the exact thing that you tell me. I promise. You have my word. I'm looking directly into the camera, which is like the same as looking right at you. Run? No, I think, I, I think I'm okay. <laughs> well, I feel like there's a lie. No, 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 no. I would, I would never. I would never. Huh. It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Oh. It's a classic chat. You should read it if you haven't. It's it's lovely. It's a lovely story, just like our like Daddy Damien says. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the, the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot. But then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you, and you were cracking maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. Sweet Manchego. <laughs> It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado. And it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? Philly once told me you can't trust John. <laughs> you trust someone who can't say Jif correctly. I do say it correctly. It's pronounced Jif. Per the, per the creator of the GIF. Four months, 11 days, and 20 wonderful hours with Sleepy. Thank you so much, Sleepy. I really appreciate that. So it's... it's what's... Yeah, basically, it's peanut butter. It's pronounced the same. Well, I'm pretty... When did, when did Jiffy peanut butter become a thing? Yeah, hell yeah. See, K... See, we say it correctly. Billy's the one that says it wrong, and you can tell me said that. <laughs> no, 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 Katie, Katie, this is this is a one-time thing. This isn't a from now on thing. This is a one-time thing. <laughs> one for one time only. I'll say I'll say I'll say it the incorrect way one time. I'll say gif one time just for you. There were no rules. <laughs> there were no rules to agree to. I'll say GIF one time just for you. Just for you, Katie. No, I say GIF. That's how the that's how the inventor of the GIF says that it's pronounced. So that's how it's pronounced. Also, it infuri infuriates people when I say GIF. So it makes it a lot more fun to say it that way. the first five pages and then read a, a review of the movie. I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. Uh... Actually, I, he didn't even pay me, so when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are telling me to engage in literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. All right, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucy in high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Head back to class. Hell yeah, Katie. Have a fantastic time in class thank you so much for taking time out of your extremely busy day and stopping by to hang out with us i really appreciate that very much thank you so much don't get lost i don't i don't think she'll get lost i hope she doesn't get lost please don't get lost katie 
We'll be we'll be we'll be thinking about you and hoping that you don't get lost. Now now I'm worried, Sleepy. Why why do you think she's gonna get lost? You go. I'll cover your classes. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmerch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head upstairs and out of the school in tense silence. Hugo's gonna Hugo's gonna be mad because we spent time with Damien instead of him. Lucian, Damien, and I all pile into my car and begin to drive home. Lucian immediately Why are they all getting in my car? Doesn't doesn't Hugo Oh, Lucy and Damien. Okay. I was like, why is Hugo coming with us? Hugo's not coming with us. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. Yeah, they all piled into my car. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you. Hmm. Lucian continues staring out the window. Love you too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. Isn't he like, why did you bring this strange guy with you to the school? We barely know him. He's lived in the neighborhood for like a week. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot of a lot we need to work out. It's all right, and all the and all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. Oh, there is that. Yes. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. Just. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. See you around soon. Oh, we got the eggplants! We got those eggplants, chat! Oh! It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Ah. I come home to find a man that curled up on the couch with a blanket, watching TV. I pop down next to her. Yo! What you watching? This game's so fucking well. I mean, it is made by the the Game Grumps, or at least the the team that works on the Game Grumps. So I'm they they've got some weird shit. I really like the Game Grumps. So Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh! I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby, chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Hmm. I I don't I don't know. Hmm? How how'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian, since he tried to uh. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage, and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? Oh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you so I'm glad that you enjoy the very small array of voices that I have at my disposal. Oh, I think I think it's we're, we're, I mean we're already planning it. We're already planning it to be a thing, so I think that's going to happen at some point. I don't know when, but I think it's going to happen at some point. You would cause oh, you better believe. I would do my best to cause as much chaos as possible. I would make that my life goal, my D&D &D life goal. 
Lucy and stream the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Oh, dad tips number 69. Oh, I, I missed it. I missed it. That was dad tip number 69. That's the most important one. Oh, how'd we do? I forgot we get rated on. Oh, we got Simply an A rig. Marvelous. Oh, we did marvelously, chat. We did marvelously. Ah, 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 ah. Welcome. <laughs> Alright, who should we, who should we, oh no, oh no, Craig's getting really needy. I don't like Craig, he's, look at, he's got two messages. Hey bud, so I have a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner, and I know it's kind of a faux pas to invite another bro, but I've known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read on him, and I know it's going to be super awkward if I go by myself. Will you please come with me? Oh, I love food. I especially love food that's free. And I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't wanna... I don't wanna... I don't wanna go. I don't like Craig. He also wants me to go running with him. He's very needy. Brian and his beard, do we wanna... Do we wanna go on a second date? Have we... We never... We didn't go on a date with Joseph. We didn't go on a date with Yosef. Do we wanna go on a date with Yosef? Or do we want to go on a date with, uh, a second date with Billy? Uh, also, Kay, we refer to, we refer to Brian as Billy. Because I, I think it looks just like Mr. Marbles. We want to go on another date with Billy? You guys just want to hear me do a Billy impersonation. That's not, sounds nothing like Billy. That's the only, that's the only reason you want us to go on a date with Billy. <laughs> you just want to hear my Billy impersonation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it wouldn't be the first time, Sleepy. That's all I'm gonna say. It wouldn't be the first time. Or, or the last time. Or the second time, or the third time. That's what I have to say about that. Alright, we'll go, let's go on another date with Billy. You want to rub his belly? <laughs> All right, I don't remember. I gotta remember my my Billy voice. It's been several weeks. It's been I think several months since we played this game. Dad tip number thirty six: Trust no one. Trust no one. Okay, what was my Billy voice? Hey Daisy, I, I, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? That's not it. That's not it. Am I at the end? It's starting to blend in the Hugo. Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian, and now he's challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my fishing, fishing research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still though, I have to accept. You heard the Aussie? Oh, hell yeah. I type back to Brian. Get get used to that voice, Kay, because we've chosen to go on a date with Billy. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish. And my lawn could use another good mowing. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up. An hour previously forgotten exist. An hour I previously. I had previously forgotten existed. Man, that's going to be a rough start. <laughs> it's a combination of four accents. Yeah, you didn't know that Billy's actually Australian, uh, Swedish, Lithuanian, and um, Martian. All rolled into one. Amanda. Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen, eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece like some, some kind of monster. I didn't raise you like that. Hmm. What? It's called string cheese, and not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Ugh. Did you just call me in here to criticize my controversial string cheese eating technique, or what? 
No, Amanda. We have we have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master fisher fisherman overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Huh? Nope. My stint in the Scouts was briefly and purely transactional. Thought I could get free cookies, but I didn't know that I had to be, like, outside and tie knots and stuff. Just like Billy. It sounds just like Billy, Kay. Well, no, Billy. Billy's actually from Mars. Billy's actually from Mars. That's where he came from. But I have to beat Brian. Hmm. Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at the coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher. During the interview, they asked me if I knew how to work an espresso machine, and I really wanted the job, so I lied and said yes. On that first morning, there was a line out the door, and within half an hour, I severely burned my hand, and they told me to go home and never come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. <sighs> you can lead a horse to water. What do horses have to do with fish and burns? Hmm. Dad, please. I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Please try to explain it to me. Okay. Brian's just... He just thinks that he's so much better than me, and he purposefully reminds me of, of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Hmm. Every time... Wait, what happened? Oh, Sleepy, you gotta do some shopping with that money! You gotta, you gotta do some shopping with all that money you got! That explains the fascinating... Oh no, not the spoders! Not the little spoders! Is that what you think is happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, good. I know that's what's happening. <gasps> All right, Pops, we should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning. Night, Amanda. It's the middle of the day. Whoa, whoa, it's the middle of the day. What are we going to bed for? Hey! I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. I'm wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked up mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing pole in one hand and a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say a thing. That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. I don't understand why, but I feel like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, and wait, and wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong line. Or the wrong, wrong lure, sorry, the wrong lure. I don't know anything about fishing. I look up and see my father, just as he looked that one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. My boat tips over and I fall into the water, sinking further and further. I see the multitudes of fish that had been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. Oh no. You gotta use a neutral buoyancy lure if you're trying to catch trout, buddy. I jumped awake to the sound of my alarm. It's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I gradually slip on clothes and get ready. 
I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Mm, no. Well, we gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. I got a dream <laughs> of fish with, with Brian's eye. I mean, Billy's eyes. That's some fan art I want to see. I want to see someone do like a photorealistic drawing of a fish, but give it like Billy's face. But I think the thing is that she was sleeping in her clothes from the day before. I think she was sleeping in her clothes from the day before. Never. Amanda. I'll get up. In a minute. All right. Brian should be here in 20. So you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blankets to wave me away. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the, I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Martian! My dude, how you doing? How's your how's your morning treating you? How's your early morning treat? Oh, it's, I guess it's 10 o'clock. It's not too early. But how's your morning treating you? Yeah, Billy. Billy's a Martian. Like, Billy's from Mars. We've decided. It, everything makes sense if we equate Billy to being an alien. Ooh, a pack for Sleepy. Hell yeah. Also, Martian, if you would direct your attention to the community challenge... You'll see that we have a community challenge going right now uh, for for a brand new pack of stream loot cards um, that'll be extremely chaotic. They're going to be all, 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 all action cards. So no sound alert cards, no gift cards, no cards that don't do anything. They're going to be all action cards, like things like blindfolds and, well, this is starting to sound weird. Maybe, maybe don't start with blindfolds. Um, but yeah, they're gonna be all... <laughs> uh, uh, oh, wait. Holy shit. Wait, that's one, two, three, four? Whoa, hang on. I lost count. Okay, so I sent Sleepy one pack. But there's another one, two, three, four, five more packs for Sleepy? Holy crap, alright. That's a lot of packs. There you go, Sleepy. You always start with blindfolds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, you know, don't even, don't even ease them into it. Just start with the blindfolds. Here, I got mine, I got mine right down here. I keep them very conveniently right here. Look how sad I look in my blindfold. <laughs> I very conveniently keep all my, all my blindfolds within hand's reach. I underscore put underscore Ooh, you underscore to underscore sleep wants to gift a pack of stream loot to Martian. Hell yeah. Here you go, Martian. There you go, Martian. My blindfold? I underscore put underscore you underscore to underscore oh. sleep has arrived in the chat. <laughs> oh, Sleepy's here. If you didn't realize, Sleepy's here. This is, no, it's just like a sad face. It's just a sad. I have different ones. Wait, I have different ones. Uh, where are they? Here they are. Yeah, I got different ones. This is the sad one. This one looks sad. Um, this one, oh, this one, this is the dizzy one. This one looks dizzy. This has become just a, uh, a, a face mask modeling stream. Oh, this is, a, this one's a monkey. This one's a monkey. Uh... This one's sad, real sad. This one's crying. He's so sad. Um, and this one's, this is a sleepy boy. There's another one. Where's the other one? Oh, here it is. This is the one that looks like it has a ball sack hanging over its head. And these are all for when folks redeem the, the blindfold cards. The blindfold cards. <sighs> We're so happy that you're here, Sleepy. We're so happy. We're so happy to have you here. The ball sack one is your favorite. <laughs> well, I think it's supposed to be hair. Where did it go? 
Yeah, I think it's supposed to be like his hair hanging down. I think it's supposed to be like the like he's got like hair that's like hanging down his forehead. But to me, it just looks like a ball sack. A big old ball sack. Okay. Still rubbing your eyes. We walk. Jintoyin says it's just to some hair. Wow. It's not to a coarded heart. Coarded heart. Coarded heart. Oh, Jinto! <laughs> Welcome, Jinto! <laughs> I'm glad. I don't know if you've been here, Jinto, but if that was the moment that you arrived for, yeah, it won't say ball sack. <laughs> there's a there's a very strong filter on on what you can say through stream loots. I've noticed that the hard way. I I don't know if you've been here for a little while, Jinto, but I really hope that was the exact moment that you arrived for. Is when we were talking about how that face mask looks like there's a there's there's a ball sack hanging over its eyes. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that was the first thing you arrived for. <laughs> if that doesn't sum up the stream, I don't know what does. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Get some water. Get some hydration. I hope you're doing well today, Jinto. Still rubbing your eyes. We walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Hey. Early board, early birds get the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Woof, woof. Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell! Let Jay sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell, and Daisy and, Daisy and immediately falls asleep. You're ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. That mask is what... Ooh... Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I think it looks like, Kay. That's what I think it looks like. What does it look like to you? I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the, to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north north of here. Little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad takes me up there all the time. Used to take me up there all the time. I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need so we can catch some trout, have a nice little fire, and enjoy nature. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course, I could pro- It's probably not as nice as it sounds- It sounds like yours is, though. Right. I've never seen this game. You're rom romancing all- So, I've, I, in the end, we're gonna- we're, I guess we're gonna pick one, and that's gonna be the one we romance. But we can go on dates with, with all of them, and see who we like the best. Um, I think once you go on three dates, you like select that one as your like the one you're gonna get the ending for. Um, so after this date, we won't be able to go on another date with Billy or to lock us into his ending. Um, we've also gone on two dates with Hugo already. Yeah, so we get to we get to go on dates. Um, and determine who we're, who we're gonna end up going steady with. Which daddy is gonna be our daddy? We haven't decided yet. I'm pretty adamant that I don't like Craig. Even though it seems like everybody in chat likes Craig. I'm digging a hole here. I stare out at the forest lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusky pink light throughout the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into the brush. After a nice quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up to a magnificent lake. Well, here we are! 
Uh, he made me go. He made us go to the gym, K. How dare he? How dare he make us go to the gym? What an asshole. That's why I don't like him. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us barking. The kids wake up and wander to the, sh to the shore, where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake, where he has a canoe waiting. Ah, great, it's still in one piece. Hold on, help me out with Maxwell. I help Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest onto Maxwell. Woof woof! All right, your turn! Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Uh... Maybe, maybe if I fall in, you can save me. If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Oh, he liked that. Look, we got the eggplants. That means that means he liked that. No! I mean, a hike is fine. A hike is fine. I just don't want to... I don't want to go to the gym. The gym sounds like a terrible time. A hike is cool, though. Suit yourself! You're, I don't know what this voice is. This is like an amalgamation of all the voices that we've done so far. <laughs> Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. You kids want a fish? Ugh. I'm good with just throwing rocks into the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. <laughs> yeah, like, take that water. Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Ah. It's... is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want a fish? I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. We're gonna go explore in the woods and look at bugs and stuff. Oh no, don't do that. Alright, be safe, don't go too far. Brian puts the life vest around himself, and we throw all our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place, looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves in, into the middle of the lake. Yeah, yeah, when the eggplants fly, that's how you know, that's how you know they're into it. Most freshwater fish usually feed at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge, after all. Fisherman knowledge and I am knowledge, fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? Sounds easy enough to me. What's on the line? Besides all the fish I'm gonna catch, obviously. <laughs> I was thinking something a little more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Custody of our children? More than that, let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. Whoa, 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 he's taking my weed whacker! The weed whacker 2000. That's a limited edition. But, if you win, you get my pulsar. The Reach and Cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit. The Reach and Cut 3000 is state of the art. My Weed Whacker is a prized possession, but there are those hard to reach branches at the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruning. You're on. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He casts it into the lake. Oh boy, now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box, at the pole and at the pole in my hand. Um, insult the fish. <laughs> stretch before, yeah, you gotta stretch. You gotta stretch before physical activity chat. That's step one, step one of our, our daddy vice. <laughs> Andrew has dad vice on the podcast. I've got daddy vice. Stretch before all physical activities, chat. <laughs> this has been a PSA by Jay Chili. Thank you very much. Because I'm such a pro fisherman, I anticipate a lot of quick physical movements over the course of this fishing session. To prepare for such activities, I will now stretch my body so that it is limber and ready for battle. Uh. You're welcome, Kay. I'm happy to help. I'm more than happy to help where possible, wherever possible. That's very responsible of you. I do a few ca calf stretches and bicep pulls and crack my neck several times. Uh. I bent over and try to touch my toes, but I just can't make it happen. I can barely get the tips of my fingers past my shins. All right. 
My noble body is now lethe and pliant, perfect for wrinkling every trout in this lake with my bare hands. Now what? Uh. Perform the fish mating call. Uh, uh I, I guess, I guess tie a knot or something. I count walking to my car. Yeah, walking to your car is a thing. You should stretch. Okay, fr from from today forward, every every day from now on, before you walk to your car, I want you to stretch. <laughs> Doctor, doctor's orders. I'm a doctor now. I forgot to tell everybody. I got my doctorate last night. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, we got the we got the eggplants. Dr. Chill. I think Dr. Chill is sounds better than Dr. Chili. Dr. Chill's got a nice ring to it. I take my pole and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Brian. The classic hunter's bend. I learned that one in my youth. Yep. This one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With this knot, I will cast my heavy, my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over at Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast this sucker. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Sorry, I... Judge the wind speed wrong. This cold air drive, drives the pressure down. Ha! Hey. <laughs> Go ahead and take my pole. I know it's a hard it's hard switching to a new pole. You're not used to. I'll fix up another lore. Brian hands me his pole with a smile, and I just sit there, feeling like an idiot. Second order, a, a glizzy a day. Oh, no, no, a glizzy, a glizzy a day. Oh, oh, oh. Well, hang on, what's happening? Fishing around here is easy. They group up. All you gotta do is line up three of the same species and reel them in. Okay, three of the same species. I got it. All right, go. I need to match three of the same species. Uh, I can't tell which fish is switch. Match that fish. Oh, oh, we're playing match that fish. Uh, I need three, three of the same. Uh. Uh oh. Like, do they need? Match of the day, oh. Of the day. Oh, what's happening, chat? I don't know what's happening. Oh. Uh oh. I don't know what I'm doing. There's no. There's no. Like, do I. Oh! Oh, I like move them around. Oh, this is like. This is like Honey Pop. Now we're fishing. Now we're fishing with power. Now you're fishing. <laughs> Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Nice catch. Catch of the day. Uh oh. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Mr. Eyeball? What's going on over there? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> oh, we're out of time. What we get? What we get? Yes! Yes! We are the champions! We are the fishing champions! We did it! We did it! <laughs> and in the character voice what did I, I i forget what i said Kay. i got really concerned because suddenly we were fishing good work thank you thank you billy i really appreciate that i really appreciate your encouragement in my fishing my mad fishing abilities 
Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big. The tip of the pole dips down repeatedly and the line starts to run. Uh-huh. Was that not you? I thought that was you, Kay. Was that not you that did the line? I missed, or the eye. I missed who did it. Who was that? I thought it was you. Oh, it's Jinto. Oh, Jinto. Hell yeah. Thank you for that, Jinto. Reel it in! I finally get the fish right up next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Billy hands me a net. It's all yours. I lean down and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. That pole size is mine. All my... Uh Uh-oh. Oh, did we fall in? He's going to rescue us, right? I don't know how to swim, chat. The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. I should have taken the life vest. All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian... Ooh, pulled into Brian's arms. I'm finally dragged upwards, spurting water. All of our gear floats on the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. I don't know about that. You all right? Does that count as one? Uh Well, seeing as all our fish are now swimming safely back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh, please be careful, Kay. (laughs) Please be careful. If you're you're driving and watching, I very much appreciate that, but please, please, please drive carefully. Please make it wherever you're going safely. We row back to shore with Maxwell in tow. Once we get to the beach... Oh! Oh, he took his shirt off! Once we get back to the beach, Maxwell darts out into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of, uh, dots of lake water glisten in the sun across his strong back. Man, all that general contracting must have built that guy like an ox. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Yeah. I'm gonna get a fire going so we can dry off. Wanna, wanna hand me yours? I, uh, yes, okay. I re- reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had done more push-ups, sit-ups in my life. Or any sit-ups at all, really. Another thing you bested me in, stupid sexy Brian. You might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like it's the only lunch we'll have. The day's young. We can't fish from the shore. Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Brian sets a couple lures out by the water's edge. We're probably going to have to put the kibosh on the competition for now. Until another day. You put the app. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, thank you for that, Jinto. I really appreciate that. Also, Jinto, uh, if you've noticed in our channel points, we're doing a uh, community challenge right now for a an ex- a new a new deck of stream loot, which I'm calling the Chaos Deck. It's going to be all actions, all extremely dis- disruptive actions to like gameplay and stuff like that. It's going to be a deck that's only only action cards. So. Um, I'm going to drop cards at certain intervals throughout the uh, the community challenge. So at 25k contributed, I'm going to drop ten the first 10 cards for the chaos pack. Which I think is going to be is going to be real interesting cuz I have some real doozies planned for the pack. I got some real doozies. My stomach growls. Hmm. You hungry? Oh, I'm fine. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola bar. Oh, I am I am a sucker for cargo shorts. Ah. <laughs> Let me just say, I'm a sucker for cargo shorts. I have a small child. I am flushed with snacks. Brian joins me by the fire, and I accept the cargo short granola bar. And now we're back to waiting. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. There are a couple of smart kids. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They probably established a small rural, gov- rural 
rural government by this point and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around at the sun cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow, nature is beautiful. A mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks. Here you go, bud. Brian hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh, I've always hated how this stuff smells. Really? I've always kind of liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell con continues bounding up to me, a huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks at me expectantly. Oh, we're going for that fake-out throw. I wind up and pretend to throw the stick. Maxwell runs away for a second and then looks around, confused. <laughs> Brian and I laugh. I toss the stick to Maxwell for real, and he jumps up to catch it in his mouth. <laughs> it is a little messed up that we're taking advantage of a dog's inert trust in humans for our own amusement. Hmm. Maxwell, get over here. I gotta make it up to you. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Oh, butt, butt pets. <laughs> gotta go for those butt pets. Oh, we got the eggplants! <gasps> oh! <laughs> I give Maxwell a few good pats on his backside. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish begin routinely pulling at Brian's lures, Brian, Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whoa, Dad! Dad bod patrol, I'm going to have to issue you both a citation and demand you both put your shirts on. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. Where have you guys been? Studying etymology. What? Huh. We were playing with bugs. Hmm. I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for, a child? Yes. Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Uh, right? We take a seat around the fire, and Brian serves us all generous piles of fish on our paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? Fish taste okay? Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously, mouths full of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Old Harding family recipe. Why are your why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, you don't want to know. You don't want to know what happens when you're not around. You don't don't ask those questions, Amanda. If you're not prepared, if you're not prepared for the answers. <laughs> well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake, and then Aww. one thing led to another, and boom, wet pants. And then I accidentally tipped over the boat. Don't worry, all of our gear floated to the surface, so we didn't lose anything, right, Jay? I, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh, hell yeah, congrats, Jinto. Congrats, uh-oh. Oh, Jinto! Jinto, I'm so glad. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Pin Pincher Chin. Pincher Chin. That's a I kinda like that name. Pincher Chin. It's got a it's got a certain ring to it. I can't believe he just covered for me. Gosh, he even out humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including my world famous sense of humility. We finish our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. No worries, Kate. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. You have a fantastic rest of your day if I don't see you today. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda and Daisy. They've had a, good, uh, had a long day. Been an ordeal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove that I'm the most awake dad on the block, but yeah, I'm beat. Fine. <laughs> I 
as we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window, and the low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. Mosquito! Oh no! I'm so sorry to hear that! I'm so sorry to hear that! Get some, uh... Get some, uh... Itch cream! I know there's, like, mosquito bite cream that you can slap on there before it starts to itch too bad. Get some of that and slap it on there! Before it starts getting bad. Also, this is this music's bopping. This music bopping. This is my this is my jam. This is my jam. Hey, sleepyhead. I open my eyes and realize that I dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh, hey, I was resting my eyes. Uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict. So I'm super awake for it. Have a great day, Kay. Thank you so, so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And ready to fight. With my strong arms. It's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse on the, onto the couch. Long day. Yep. I was so close to that pulsar. Huh? Pulsar? Yeah. Brian and I were competing to see who can catch the most fish and... Ugh. <gasps> uh, stop. Why do you care so much? Amanda Panda. Just look at the guy. He so obviously got my number. And he's rubbing my face in it. Aww. Dad, I love you, but you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb. We're clearly the superior dad. You know what? I don't have any of the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I can't get over your guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I designed them that way, Ziggy. We got the episode one of, of Dream Daddy. We got to design our character. And that was the character I designed. Somebody asked me to design it close to myself. Because I have a very strong tendency to design characters that are like... As horrifying looking as possible. Uh, but that was the one thing I took liberties with. With the eyes just staring off into eternity. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I am a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. What, you don't like his eyes? Look at them. They look right at you. <laughs> look at him. Look at that majestic mustache. That mustache is considerably more majestic than mine. Like, this is mine. Look at him. Look at, look at him. He's like, he's like the Adonis of mustaches. That's the coolest mustache I've ever seen, with the exception of, like, those twirly mustaches. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. I've been s I've been setting up my new OBS for about two hours now. Oh no, Ziggy, is everything going okay? Do you have any ha any questions, or is it just time consuming setting it up? If there's anything that you're you can't figure out how to do, let me know. I'm pretty good with regular OBS. I know nothing about Streamlabs OBS though. So if you're using Streamlabs OBS, I might not be able to help you. But if you're using OBS Studios. If you have any questions or if anything's giving you trouble, just let me know. Night Pops! Dad tip number 58. Oh, practice makes perfect. Was that what I said? Oh, oh, look at... We got Max Lawn Care. Max Lawn Care! <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh, we got an S rating with Billy! Slash Brian! Who's actually Billy? We know it's actually Billy. Spoiler, it's Billy. You're finally figuring it out? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Ziggy. I know you can do it. I believe in you. I've got full faith that you can figure it all out. I I personally think regular OBS is a little bit... It's It uses less CPU than Streamlabs, which was the original reason I started using it instead of Streamlabs. Um, but once you figure out how to do everything, it gives you a little bit more freedom to just set things up however you want. 
whereas Streamlabs uh, OBS is kind of like it comes with a bunch of stuff, but it doesn't let you do a whole lot as far as just designing everything yourself. Hell yeah! Dad tip number 80, 81, it's better to be early than late. Dad tip number 19, use your hips when throwing. Dad tip number 83, minimize eating fried foods, candy, and sweets. I don't like that one. Disagree. Dad tip number 36, trust no one. It's a beautiful night, and the air smells so fresh, so I decide to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide, walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. Uh-oh. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile sports are nice it's it's very obvious <laughs> oh no you accidentally turned your pc off how'd that happen ziggy what happened uh it's very obvious that this dialogue about uh, the game and the sports are nice were clearly written by folks that have no idea anything about sports like myself so i appreciate that I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary, sitting alone and in the corner, nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass to me before staring off into middle distance. Whoa! Andrew! Oh, this is a very this is a very convenient stream for a dad raid. This is a very convenient stream since we're romancing those daddies. Andrew, how did the rest of your stream go? Welcome, raiders. How's everybody doing on this fine, fine Wednesday evening slash Thursday morning if you're in another part of the world where you're in the future. In the future. Boop, boop, boo. How's everybody doing tonight? And how was the rest of your stream, Andrew? How did everything go? Hunting monsters. We should probably say hi. We'll say hi. I, I decide to say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't get up. I take a seat anyway, and she finally notices me. Hey, it was fun. Taylor. Things went well. Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear, Andrew. That's what I really like to hear. And thank you so much again for the raid. I really appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. Hey, cowboy. You all right? Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Mm. Tears start welling up in her eyes. Oh. Uh. I, will you walk a gal home? Uh, sh sure. I slide out of the booth. Seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out a hand to help her, but she waves me away. Uh. I got it, I got it. She clearly does not got it. Ratzel! Can't see anything I'm typing on, on his stream? I see this. I see this one thing you just typed now that says can't see anything I'm typing on his stream. What happened? Was was like chat not working for a hot sec there for you, Ratzel? It's so good to see you. How you doing? How was the rest of your stream, Ratzel? How was the rest of your stream? It's so good to see you. Look at those, look at those tiger heart like which speaking of i didn't even plan i didn't even plan the fact that i wore this while playing dream daddy <laughs> i didn't even plan i wore it and i was like oh this is this is a, a weird coincidence <laughs> i also didn't plan the fact that we were playing a visual novel on the day that a uh, a beardy bunch podcast episode about visual novels came out oh 2000 to the chaos deck yes so i should talk about the chaos deck again hang on i'm gonna switch over we're gonna take we're gonna take like a five minute break from Dream Daddy. I'm gonna switch over here, um, so I can talk about the Chaos deck, the Streamloot Chaos deck, which is gonna be the first official expansion to the the J Chili Streamloot line. Uh, it's gonna be a second deck that's gonna be exclusively. Uh, 
Uh, it's going to be an expansion. <laughs> uh, it's going to be an expansion that has exclusively action cards to make me do stuff either in stream or in game in, on the stream, stuff like that. So none of these sound effect cards, none of these gift cards, nothing like that. It's going to be all action all the time. So the way the way I'm doing it, once we hit 25,000 points contributed, uh, I'm going to drop the first 10 cards into the, the chaos pack. Should it be playing? Should what be playing? What happened, Sleepy? Uh, so where are we? Where are we with points? We're at 8K. So we're at 8K for the Chaos Pack. Bum, bum, bum. That sounds really ominous, and I love it. Hey, Malexi. Malexi, how are you doing? Welcome. How are you doing, my friend? It's really good to see you again. How's your day treating you? Alright, let's jump back to the game. Let's jump back to the game. Oh, 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 it's on Spotify. Uh, walk on took a while. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, a Teddy Ursa. Hell yeah. Teddy Ursa in, in the chat. You know what? Hang out here for a second. I walk over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Oh, that's nice of us. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's, Mary's cul-de-sac. And I'm just making sure she gets home safe tonight. I know you. Yeah, it's nothing weird, just... She usually has one of the bar staff walk her home, but I trust you. Why would you just trust some random... Why would you just trust some random guy? <laughs> that doesn't seem okay. I mean, we're okay, but... Like, maybe we're not okay. He doesn't know that. <laughs> she doesn't, like, go home with. I don't really want to say it. One of the guys she meets. Nah. Nah. Ain't her thing. Huh. I head back to the booth. Mary stumbles out of the seat and directly into my arms. It's still raining a little bit. I take off my coat and hold it over Mary's head. That's not oh, we're such we're such we're such a gentleman chat. This is this is unbelievable. Stream. Oh, sorry, Rats. I missed your message. Stream was good. It was a total surprise when Billy raided you. I was actually about to stop, and then the second before I was gonna say it, he raided, so I kept going. Oh, that's so cool. I was really happy. I I hadn't realized that you were live. So um, when he when he brought up that you were live and we were gonna send a raid over your way, I was really happy because I've unfortunately I've missed a good majority of your streams lately, and I was really happy to get to catch part of this one. So that was really awesome. I was really glad that we got to head over that way. Such a gentleman. Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up the street toward the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her, for fear that she might hit on me, or not. What did the bartender mean by, in her thing? Uh. Sorry, you have to see me like this. I'm usually not... I know Joseph doesn't like it when I... Just, sorry. It's alright. Mm. I'm sorry if I... Have... If I'm ever mean to you, it's all right. Hmm. No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just, I'm having a really, ah. forget it. Uh, wish I had a more static streaming, streaming schedule, but I just kind of do it when I'm able. Hey, no worries, Ratzel. That's, I mean, that's usually how I do it too. Um, this week has been a little bit different because I have a much more open availability like schedule right now. Um, but most weeks, it's it's the same way for me. I just fit it around other stuff I got going on. But you got nothing to worry about. I'm always I'm always keeping an eye out for when when some of uh, my fellow wonderful streamer friends go live. Uh, also, we didn't get we we didn't get a shout out for Andrew. Let's get a shout out. Let's see if the shout out player is working. Let's let's enjoy let's enjoy an ATM zero clip. Let's let's see what Andrew. Oh oh. All right, you. I will fight. You, I will fight. Was this drunk? This was drunk. So, of course, the cane is a thrusting weapon. But the cane is a gentleman's weapon. And what do gentlemen do better than whip the shit out of their enemies? I might die, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did die. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how that happened, Andrew. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Woo. How did that happen? How did, how did you get drunk? I don't... That's so weird. That's so weird. I don't understand how that happened. I just can't understand it. 
<laughs> hmm. Hmm. I wonder if someone had amassed a large amount of bits with the sole intention to make a whole body bottle of Irish whiskey and then my body was like, wait, please stop. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it went when I when I did drunk souls too, Andrew. I got through like the whole bottle and I was like, guys, I think I'm gonna switch the water and we're just gonna hang out. <laughs> <laughs> As we got to the cul-de-sac, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait, can we just... Hold on. What's wrong? Uh, uh. How about another drink? Old time's sake. Come on, Mary. It's bedtime. Mary looks me... Mary looks me up and down giving me a half smile. Hey. You're right. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding on to me for a little longer than feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. Mm. You're a good kid. Thanks for, for the company. Mm. Mary gives me a pat on the back, straightens out her sweater, and walks the rest of the way to the front door herself. Huh. That's... Okay, so something, something weird... Something weird is going on with Welcome. Joseph and Mary. Dad's. Something real at all. Craig, Craig is so freaking needy. He wants me to go to dinner. He wants me to go to the gym. Craig, you gotta calm down, my dude. You gotta calm down. We don't like you like that. <laughs> uh, have we have we gone on at least one date with everybody? Oh no, we didn't go on a date with Joseph. We can we can figure out what's going on with Joseph. Yeah, if we go on another date with Hugo, that ends the game. We went on one date with Damien. Here, we'll go. Let's go on a date. We'll go on a date with Joseph. <laughs> Dad tip number 55. Liquor before beef. I, didn't, I missed the rest. There was more. But just liquor before beef. Dad tip number 78. Try not to make assumptions about people. Is he gonna, is he gonna give me... No, nope, he's gonna load. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait, how do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A light smattering of Jesus. Will he want me to pray? Is he going to pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Who is this? Talking to Joseph, huh? huh. Oh, it's Amanda. Gah. Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passage? Ice cream socials? Khakis? Oh, I love khakis. I love the dad tips, too. I love the dad tips, too. <laughs> I made a comment earlier, Andrew, that, that dad vice is your thing, but we're going to have daddy vice on this episode. <laughs> Daddy Vice with Daddy Chill. <laughs> Coming at you. <laughs> First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. There's a difference. Ugh. Daddy Vice, like a pro wrestling move. Ooh. Put him in, put him in the Daddy Vice. <laughs> Give him the Daddy Vice. <laughs> You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. <sighs> Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too business casual? Hmm. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got this. Huh. Amanda focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great meeting you and... Well, that's a lot of typing. That's a lot of typing. Oh, Sleepy's lurking. Sleepy's lurking. Uh-oh. It was great to meet you and your family. I'm still new around here. 
So if you'd like to, I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. The smiley's a nice touch. Almost immediately, I receive a, a response. What'd he say? Hi, Jay. If you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today. And we'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. Huh, that wasn't so bad. Ziggy, thank you so much for the work. I really appreciate it. I hope everything's going well with your computer. I hope everything's going well. I hope you're back up and running after you accidentally turned it off, and I hope everything's going well with OBS. Thank you so much for hanging out, Ziggy. I really appreciate it. He uses a lot of exclamation points. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a, with a, with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time. Uh. I respond back. Sounds like fun. Oh no! <laughs> Great! Come on by the house as soon as you're ready. We'll be here. Well, guess I'm doing this. Uh, it just kind of it just kind of lets us know that you're you're hanging around, you're hanging around the stream, but you're not necessarily like right watching the stream, but you have the stream open, and we very much appreciate that. It's kind of like a I'm here, but I'm not actually here kind of deal. Save a brownie for me. Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore. Eh? Amanda stares at me, unblinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Ugh. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never. Yeah, right, chat? I'm never weird. Never. Mm -mm -mm. I make the short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Jay. But what if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're, they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over the porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Uh, Jay. The door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph's eldest. What's his name? Hey! Hey. Uh... Chris. Hi again. It's me. I'm Jay. I know what your name is. Oh yeah. We met at the barbecue. How's the uh... Please don't say it. Jesus. Oh god. <laughs> How's the Jesus? <laughs> uh, I usually do that, so next time I'll say, yeah, you don't have to say. It's just like a little thing that's there. I saw a bunch of other streamers that do it, so we added one. It's just a little thing that's there that you can just let folks know you're around, but you're you're not necessarily like you're you're doing something else and you're not like fully invested in the chat. You got a question, is there supposed to be an inch on the left side of your screen missing? Uh, you mean like next to next to the game window? Like you mean this black the black border that goes around it? I'm not a hundred percent sure what you're referring to. There's an inch on the left side of your screen. Do you wanna do you wanna take like a screenshot of it and send it to me on Discord and I can take a look? Compare it to mine. Chris blinks slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Is your dad? Yeah, just give me a heads up when you send it. I'll take a look and I'll compare it to mine and see if there's something something missing. Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Home. This was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph, he peeks his head around the corner. <laughs> Jay, you made it! Joseph approaches with his arms wide. Oh. I'm so glad you can come by. Are you ready to bake? I am not. I'm as, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in! Hey. Joseph leads me into a, a bright, spacious home full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Right. 
I believe, I believe you've met Chris, who left you outside. Uh. Chris. Hmm. Mm. Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. Or just a dick. Like, half of the chat box is... Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think... You gotta click on the... Oh, oh, did you send it? Here, let me take a look. Let me take a look and see. Uh... Yeah... Can you... Can you make it bigger? Also, let me ask... Oh, I do see you have, you have the stream elements. So you do have that. Can you make the chat... Like, if you grab... If you go to the side of the chat, do you get, like, the little arrow, like, the expander arrow? Can you expand it and make it a little bit, um... Because I can change the size of chat. Like, I can do the little expander arrow make it bigger. If you go, if you, like, hover on the side, just like what you do, like, if you're going to expand a window, does that fix it? If you expand it a little bit? He's hunky. Oh, this, you think this guy's hunky? Oh. oh. I mean, I'm not, I haven't been into Joseph. Jo Joseph's, like, on the bottom of the list of daddies that I wanted to romance. It's all right. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Ooh. Don't take that personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest is a, in a big family can't be easy. Oh. We try to cut him a little slack where we can. Ah, and here are the twins, Christian, Christy, say hello. Wait, they're all, they're all named various forms of Chris. Say hello to Jay. Hello, father. Hello, Jay. They're really, oh my God, look at their eyes. Look at their fucking eyes. Huh. Kids, come on, dial it back on the creepy twin stick. Creepy twin stick. <laughs> Children of the corn, there they are. Can you two say, come play with us, Danny? <laughs> oh, no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. Mm -hmm. Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. Please help us, Mothra. Mm -hmm. No. I can't, no, I can't take it. Joseph is trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to bust their dad. But we can, but can we keep it up? Uh, go, uh, obscure. Now say, he who walks behind the rose. The twins tilt their head in confusion. Uh-oh. He who, he walks? He who... Mm behind some rows? <laughs> the room is silent. Joseph absolutely losing his mind. That last flub really sealed it. Oh. I don't I don't get that one. Uh, I'll see if it's a problem or not when I test stream and start to stri stop the strike. No, hey, no worries, Ziggy. No worries. You got nothing to worry about. You got nothing to worry about, Ziggy. Uh, I think it's just too small. I think you just want to expand it a little bit. Because I got it to like um, do you, you could also put the, I didn't see, did you have the activity? Uh, you could also slap the activity feed in the other side. If you go to the stream elements drop down, um, you can get the in, bu, 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 bu. it's in one of those little boxes. Yeah. If you go to obs.live docs in the stream elements menu, you can get the activity feed, which will tell you like when people uh, follow or subscribe or drop bits or anything like that. And you can I slap it on the other side, opposite the the game, and you can slap that in there too, so you can always look over and be like, "Oh, so and so followed me," and they're right on the side there. Children of the Corn. Oh, it was from Children. Oh fuck, I don't think I've ever seen the Children of the Corn movie. 
I read the short story, but the short story is nothing like the movie. Andrew! Andrew? What's up? What's up? Children of the corn, really? Is that not mainstream? I'm off my game, something fierce today. Aside from Fiesta Potatoes, what should I get? Oh, you should get the uh, the Crunchwrap Supreme. The Crunchwrap Supreme is where it's at, Andrew. I love the Crunchwrap Supreme. Yes, crunch I'm not a fan of Baja Blast, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. I'm not a fan. Actually, I don't think there's any Mountain Dew soda that I uh, that I enjoy. Mountain Dew is like the one the one line of sodas that I'm not a fan of. But the Crunchwrap Supreme is where it's at. And the Cheesy Fiesta Potatoes. The cheesy, fi the cheesy Fiesta Potatoes could be my religion. <laughs> Children of the Corn movie is old but freaky. I've never... I've read the... Sh so the original short story is a Stephen King short story. Um, but it's completely different from the movie. I know for a fact that it's completely different from the movie. It's one of his really early short stories, too. In fact, I think it's in his first short story collection, Graveyard Shift. Baja Blast for the memes, but Crunchwrap Supreme is the best thing. Hell yeah, the Crunchwrap Supreme. So I will say, there was something at Taco Bell that they no longer have that was better than the Crunchwrap Supreme, and that was the Grilled Cheese Burrito. That was the Grilled Cheese Burrito. Did you know that $5... Two times crunch wrap. The reason deal. Ooh, that's a fantastic deal. But yeah, they used to have a uh, a grilled cheese burrito that was fantastic. It was so filling. I would get two of them and I wouldn't be able to eat the second one because just one of them was so filling. I get Taco Bell. Oh, yes. Yeah, see, this is Taco Bell. If you're listening, if you're out there, Mr. Taco Bell, Mr. Mr. The Chihuahua. They used to be in the old commercial. Actually, that Chihuahua is probably not alive anymore. I'm really sorry for bringing it up. Uh, Taco Bell, look at this. I'm I'm encouraging the the masses. <laughs> Give me that brand deal, Taco Bell. <laughs> don't leave me on red. Yeah, the grilled cheese burrito. They don't have it anymore, Raph. So as as far as I know, they don't have it. They brought back. They did bring back the naked chicken chalupa recently, which is okay. Uh, yeah. So this is a dating, a dating sim, Ziggy. That's all about romancing daddies, and it's by the it's by the team that um, I, I don't think I don't think it's directly written by the Game Grumps, but it's by members of the Game Grumps team. I believe Vernon did all the all the writing on it. But a lot of the Game Grumps do, like, voice acting and stuff. Like, Danny does the voice of, uh, uh, Robert. So a lot of, and I think, I think Susie does a voice in it, too. I'm not sure who she plays, though. I think I saw her in the, the credits when the game opened, though. We have a Taco Bell mod pack on Minecraft. Yeah, I know. I know, Andrew told me. I saw it in the files. When I was installing the files, when Andrew was walking me through it, it was, like, the first thing I saw in the files. I haven't figured out that aspect of the game yet. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, have you seen have you seen my house in in Minecraft yet? Aaron's the boy. This guy right here, Joseph. Aaron plays Joseph. Jones, hey, how you doing, my friend? Welcome. How's your Wednesday treating you, Jones? Do I need more zinc? Uh possibly. I know Sleepy Sleepy had mentioned that they were. They were helping me out, and they were adding more of the roof on. So I don't... I'm not 100% sure if Sleepy finished it. I was almost done, so I really only needed a little bit more zinc to finish off the roof. So I was I was very close. Oh, Sleepy. Sleepy, do we need more zinc? If if you have more zinc, Ratzel, we could definitely probably use some. Not not a ton. We don't need a ton more, because I just want to finish that one room. My, my whole plan is I'm going to build every floor out of something different. Thank you so much, Ratzel. I really appreciate it. Maybe I'll jump on for a little bit after I wrap up stream tonight. Because I didn't get on it all yesterday. Oh, no, Jones. I'm so sorry to hear that. Another 14-hour workday. I'm so sorry. I'm hoping you're getting to just relax and take it easy and just hang out for the rest of your evening. I'm so sorry to hear that. I wish that were an option. I wish I could go, like, the, the daddy harem route, Ziggy. 
But yeah, maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll jump on for a little bit after stream tonight and just see what what's up. I got I got real scared after after I saw that giant centipede underground. Good job, guys. We're scary. I was very scared. Joseph can't take it anymore, despite his quiet protest protestations. He's laughing pretty hard into his hand, and the kids giggle with him. Yeah, I would love if we could have a, if there were a daddy harem ending. <laughs> Wait, what? I'll be out with you. Who are we getting arrested? Wait, who are we getting arrested? All of these, all of these daddies are of legal age. They, they could make their own choices if they want to be at a harem. The twins, obviously pleased with a new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. Hey. Why are you gonna get the daddy harem arrested? I don't I don't think there's anything illegal about that, Sleepy. I'm gonna be earnest. Those lion I'm gonna be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out I'll try to teach them some lines from the thing. Mm. Alright, so it looks like we're gonna be a bit you're, we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can out-trouble a career pro? I don't know about that. I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What now? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not- you're not a- you're not one of the daddies in the game, Sleepy. I'm talking about the daddies in the game. Not you, you're not a daddy. Can someone make a visual novel where the romance paths are? I would love that. I would love that. Like, I would I would write that. If someone wants to do the art for a visual novel starring the Beardy Bunch, if you want to do the art and design the game, I'll write the script. I'll write the branching script for it. You'd have a daddy. Oh, you'd have a daddy orgy and then get them arrested. Oh, 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 okay. I thought you were going to get us arrested having the daddy orgy in the game right now. That's not going to happen because there's no orgy. There's no harem path. Oh, I would love... I would also love a Beardy Bunch anime. <laughs> just how about just like an anime, like a full episode is asking a lot. But what about like an opening? The Beardy Bunch, Bunch anime opening. And it's like very overly shonen. And we're all... We all have like some kind of weird power. <laughs> kind of like who was it that did the uh the the naruto opening but they did it with spongebob characters and it was fantastic uh oh ziggy what's the matter Are you okay no there's no there's no exclamation point help i'm sorry but i'm happy to help with whatever you need that doesn't sound good christy no response Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. <laughs> Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves. And he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on his surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Uh, let's, let's examine coffee table. There's a couple cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross. Hey, another cross. This one looks a little different. And a third cross. Unified design aesthetic. Smart choice. Hurry up and get 400 followers. I want to give all oh, Jones. I'm so appreciative that you offered that. Thank you so much. We are 22. We're 22 followers away from the big four double O, which is when we're, we're going to do another 20 or no. God, I almost had 24 hour stream, another 12 hour stream. I don't think I'm ready for a 24 hour stream. Ooh, I don't like the nacho fries. To be completely honest, I think the nacho fries are a little bit overpowering. I take the cheesy Fiesta potatoes over the nacho fries any day holy shit the naruto's the Nar the spongebob shippuden intro yeah they did a fantastic job that's what i want that kind of style that kind of style in for the beardy bunch 
<laughs> I'd also love to see what we would all what what people would imagine we looked like in anime form. What would our anime selves look like in the imaginations of the community? There's also a brass thing here. It looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with. I think they're called sextants. Heh, sex. Also the bookshelf. It's a pretty sturdy wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? There's a big stack of what look like travel magazines. Hyenas of the Serengeti. The underwater mysteries of the Antarctic. And on, on and on. Seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure. Unless this is a merry thing. Who knows? Next to them are a couple of different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the Bible bases. King James. New, Com New American Standard. The Bible 14s. He is a cool youth minister, after all. On a higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, these must be Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson, Sex Detective. The eighth installment in. Wait, this is a series? Same in the floor? <laughs> well, you have this many kids and things are bound to end up on the floor. No matter how hard you try to keep it clean. I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have had both arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. Disappointed that you don't have the <laughs> exclamation point tentacle anti-command. Oh, Ziggy, I'm so sorry to disappoint. I'm so sorry. I don't I don't know if Twitch would be okay with that. I mean, I don't think they, they I guess they wouldn't care, but what would it do? What what would it do, Ziggy? <laughs> what would that command like if you if you imagined the perfect the perfect utilization for that command, what would you see it doing? Ooh, look at those black and white glizzies with hearts. Heart glizzies. That's really cool. That's really cool. I love the, the black and white emotes. The tag says C plus C, of course. I see that down I set that down and spot a house plant. Hey little guy. Keep being you, little ha tiny house plant. I spot one last thing on the floor next to the house plant. It's a silver necklace. Wow. This looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. <laughs> I do know what you mean, Ziggy. <laughs> I most I most certainly do. If there's a store here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go to the kitchen and see what's up. Uh -huh. Yeah, you gotta get that sauce. You just gotta get that sauce. That uh that nice marinara sauce. Real, real spicy marinara sauce, if you know what I'm saying, Ziggy. I walk into the kitchen to find Joseph holding Christine in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. <laughs> the twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Chris Christian? Yeah. He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brown baking batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. <laughs> You're too sweet. No, I'm not. Oh. You're so sweet, we might have to water you down with spiders. No, 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 not spiders. That's her voice. That's what she sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph being, begins tickling Christine with his free hand. Between the laughing and squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her, but that girl is locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Oh. Save me from the spiders! Uh. Renegade option! Let's go! Let's go! Renegade option! Sorry, Christine, but I've been working with the spiders the whole time. No! They bought, they bought my alliance with the promise of flies. All hail the spiders. That's oh. never something I would ever say in my life. Is that how I dress off camera? Like like my character in the game? I mean, I, I wear Hawaiian shirts on the weekends on camera. I think I'm wearing, aren't I wearing a Hawaiian shirt in the game? You make her sound like it's a gun to the back of her head. <laughs> oh, this, this isn't, this isn't me. This is, this is Yosef. Yosef who we're, we're romancing right now. I don't think I like Yosef though. So I don't think we're going to romance him too much. Joseph grins and continues his tickle torture. No one escapes the wrath of the spiders. 
After a few seconds, he relents and puts Christine, Christy down. She immediately retreats between his legs, where she watches me quietly. Christy, don't you want to bake with Jay? I don't think I own. I'm trying to think if I own any pink shirts. I don't think I do. I don't think I own any pink shirts. Oh, I have a, I have a pink Hawaiian shirt, if that counts. But it's like pink and blue. Maybe some orange. Christy vigorously shakes her head. It must be my alliance with House Tickle Spider. Oh. Are you sure? You'll get first dibs on the biggest piece of brownie. Christy hesitates, then shakes her head no again. Sparkle Pony! Huh. Ouch. Joseph covered up his disappointment quick, but that looked like it hurt. Oh. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle Pony? Yes! <laughs> Okay, go. Before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy is out out the door and down the hall. Ahead. Yes. Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. Yes. And that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? Mm. Egg beaters on linoleum floor. <laughs> it's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. No worries, Ziggy. We will be here. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. I need more pink shirts. I I wouldn't be opposed to more pink shirts. I feel like they'd be style. I have a lot of black. <laughs> I'm realizing now like that I see myself on stream that I wear black a lot. I have a lot of black t-shirts. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, Ziggy. Thank you so much for that lurk. I really appreciate that. But I have a ton of black t-shirts, and it took it took me until now to realize that there's an excessive amount of them. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout, and I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. Oh. We need a fresh start. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm not really a baker, but... Endgamer! Thank you so much for the contribution to the Chaos Deck! The Chaos Deck Expansion! Which is going to be a whole new deck in stream loot that's going to be all action cards all the time. And they're going to be merciless. They're going to be absolutely merciless. Uh, we're going to drop the first the first 10 cards at 25,000 uh, points contributed. Which I think we might be getting. We're at 12. We're at 12k. So we're getting close. We're getting close. How you doing, Endgamer? How is your day treating you? Your evening treating you? It's so good to see you. Also, Gento, thank you so much for that contribution. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Gento. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really a big... Oh, we read Excellent. this already. Don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter. So we'll probably be fine. Probably. Hey. I do love me some chaos. Got some food from work, so I'm content. Ooh. That sounds amazing, Endgamer. What kind of food? What kind of... I love to the vic vicariously live through everyone's eating habits and what they're eating. What 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 kind of food if you're, if you're not opposed to divulging that information? Oh, Jinto, thank you so much. I love that little star lurk emote. Thank you so much for the lurk. Thank you so much for hanging around, Jinto. I really appreciate it. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Jay. You've baked a cake from a box before. Once. How hard could this be? Cheese curds, chicken tender. Ooh, chicken tenders and onion rings. <gasps> oh, I love me some onion rings. Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batelli, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things and then pouring the things according to how we assumed the back of the box would tell us to. Things go according to plan and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Hey. Woo. Wait. Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Oh. Wow, Jay. Way to use those dad skills. I bet you baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose. Joseph. <laughs> All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale and voila. Duty done. <laughs> oh. Now, help me find Christy. Keep your eyes out for a pony that sparkles. Joseph, hold still. Oh. What? Thumb in position, and... Got it. Hey. Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Is he blushing? Yeah. 
Oh, uh, th thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. Ugh. We, uh... We should find Christy. Hmm. Yes, yes, we should do that, Jay. Joseph quickly composes himself. <laughs> cheese curds are so good. I don't know what cheese curds are. I'm not familiar. Hang on, I'm going to do a quick little Google search. I'm going to do a little quick little Google search. Um... Let's see what cheese curds are, because I don't know what cheese curds are. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. Oh. Oh. Oh, that looks like... Oh. Uh, I feel like I've had these before, but I can't place where. Oh, they look really good. Oh, is it just like baked cheese? Oh. That, oh, that looks really good. That looks real good. Oh, fried cheese goodness. Oh, it's fried. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. I, I've never had poutine before either. I've heard of poutine, but I've never had it. Sounds like Culver's. It sounds delicious. I don't. What is Culver's, Jinto? All right, she can't be far. You take the delta position, and I'll watch your six. Oh, you work at Dairy... Oh, that's right. That's right, I forgot. Oh, you work at one of the Dairy... So we have a Dairy Queen around here, but it's just an ice cream Dairy Queen. It's not the restaurant Dairy Queen. So I've never been to one of the restaurant Dairy Queens that actually sells, like, food. Our Dairy Queen is... is I guess I, I guess it would be one of the older Dairy Queens, where it's just ice cream. Do you even know what that means? Wink. Alpha Tango Sparkle. Roger, Roger. Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Google it when I have a chance? Okay, Culver's. Culver's. I'm Googling it right now, Jinto. Culver's. Oh, it's a restaurant. Butter burgers and frozen custard. Oh, that sounds really good. Where are these located? Culver's restaurant, frozen custard. Uh, primarily owned and operated American casual fast food restaurant chain that operates primarily in Midwestern United States. That explains why. That explains why. Yeah, everything looked fantastic in those pictures. Then click their, oh, their menu page. Hang on, let me click their menu page. Menu. Well, there, oh, there's more pictures. Oh, oh, everything looks so good. Oh no, I got closer. I'm getting hungry. I gotta close it. <laughs> they have it. They do cheese cards. Oh, that sounds so good. That sounds so good. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you out by the car. Oh, we're going to the bake yeah. sale right now. Joseph, Christy, and I arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. Looks like the bake sale is already in full swing. <laughs> Well, there's a few Culver's in Tennessee. Ooh, that, it looks it looks fantastic. Uh, we don't have any Culver's in PA, but um, I guess PA is PA would be considered Northeast, so not not Midwest. I'd be I'd be all for that, Andrew. I'd 100% be all for that. Ooh, what's this? Hey, how you doing? Oh, oh, how you how you doing? Just popping out to say hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this place is packed. Is this packed? There are a few people milling around. Maybe a value pack. Oh. If you can count a city's population on your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point. Christy rocks out of, walk, rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get set up. I want to see mom. Hey. She's down by the other row of tables helping out with another group. Want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? Wow. Yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. I remember when Amanda was her age. 
but I couldn't get her to sit still for five seconds. Ooh. Yep, great age, great age to deal with. Oh. While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all our baked goods on the table and settle in. Ratzel, I am. Have I ever seen? Have I ever been to Preminti Brothers? No. It sounds familiar though. Primanti Brothers. Primanti Brothers. Let me see... Where... Uh, oh, there's one not far from me. Oh, there's actually one not far from me. Oh, I've never heard of them, though. They're, like, in the next town over from where I live. What? What are for sale? The baked goods? Oh, oh the, the the text on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to keep that in mind, Ratzel. Thank you so much. I never heard of them, but there is... I looked it up, and there is one one town over from me. So, like, 20 minutes away from me. So, are we allowed to eat any of these... Any of our own goods? <laughs> Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitchers. Does he actually? Yeah. Joseph shrugs. He eats a brownie. See, Endgamer, they're for us and for sale. Why not both? Why not both? Ooh, an Amistar. Ooh, get that Amistar, Andrew. Hell yeah. Heard of Permanti. They're near, but never had them. It looks really good. I looked up, the, some pictures popped up, and they look really good. Ooh, ooh, look at them sandwiches. Ooh. Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop chat. I gotta stop looking at food. <laughs> I got those crazy. Ideas. Yeah, that's what happens when I get real hungry. Like, mm. <laughs> Look at the sandwiches. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the hydrate, Jinto. Thank you so much. It looks like some of the other stalls are selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Whoa, someone bought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? Huh. Please, this isn't my first time at, to the rodeo. The bake sale rodeo. I want to go to the bake sale rodeo. Oh, thank you so much, Jinto. I mean, I mean, I got it from uh, <clears throat> someone pretty, pretty rad who also may have to be in the chat or who may be eating some Taco Bell right now. I'm not sure, but uh, it's it's pretty rad. It's super comfortable. Um, I don't think it's available anymore though, unfortunately. <laughs> Ah, oh, cheers! Cheers to you, Jones! Cheers! Sandwich with fries, coleslaw, all together on the sandwich so they could eat it quick on their short breaks. Ooh. Oh, oh, Perminti, Perminti Brothers started out as, I think it was a street cart that catered mostly to construction workers, and they served sandwiches with fries and coleslaw all together on the sandwich. Ooh, that's really interesting. That's really, really interesting. Ooh. It all, everything looks so bad. Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> Maybe I'm just hungry. Maybe that's why everything's looking so good right now. Oh, can we both in chat and eating Taco Bell? Oh, that's the dream. That's the dream, Andrew. You're living the American dream. Huh. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. Yeah. I think you and I put to together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna sneak it. Let's sneak another brownie. I reach for another brownie to stress eat my worries away. Joseph smacks my hand before I can grab it. Yeah. Focus! Oh no, he didn't like that chat! Uh oh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble with Daddy Joseph! Focus, Jay. Hey. It's not long before we have our first customers. Hey, hey dude! Hiya! <laughs> Matt. Carmen Sita, great to see you guys out here. Hey. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Joseph leans close to me. Huh? This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. Mm. So what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say you used the box recipe. Don't say you used the box recipe. Uh, we improvised. I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know. 
a little bit of flour here, a pinch of salt there. It's kind of like interpretive dancing, but with cooking. Mm. Oh, interpretive dancing, interpretive cooking, yes. You can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. There will never be another batch of brownies with the exact flavor sensation that these right here have. Oh. Oh. Look at me. Look at me being, being like the perfect brownie salesman. <laughs> it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Matt. Hey. All right, all right. We'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high-five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. Yeah. See? Not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feelings from the last sale. Who's next? We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Yes, in other words, we had absolutely no idea what we were doing. It's kind of like me cooking, period. Period. That's that's how that's how I handle it. I just let the spirit, I let the spirit of Guy Fieri flow through me. I just let his spirit in, and I'm like, take me, take, take me by the hand, Guy Fieri. Lead me to Flavortown. Jay! It's Brian. Close enough. <laughs> can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? Hey. You sure can! I bet I could eat ten brownies. Must resist. Urge to be competitive. I bet... I bet I could eat... I bet I could eat eleven brownies! They used to call me Brian Hollowlegs Harding back when I was in the competitive circuit. Think you can go brownie for brownie with me? I don't, you better believe I let Guy Fieri flow through me. <laughs> I won't I won't even deny that. <laughs> Twelve brownies. Oh no! Oh no! He didn't like that. I mean Joseph did like that, Brian like that. Let's, let's save threats of comp competitive eating for another time, shall we? Brian and I stare each other down. Ha! Hey. Huh, you're right. I'll just take one for myself and one for Daisy here. Oh. Coming right up. Oh, wait, that's Joseph. Coming right up. You excited for youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah, what's the movie? Oh. It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. Oh. It's the Fast and the Furious. Really? Yeah. If you think about it, there's some heavy religious undertones. Are there? Chat? I've never seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies. Are there any religious undertones in the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> the glove has been thrown. We're going to eat 12 brownies and we're going to love every minute of it. <laughs> They're all about is family yeah so that's i've seen the memes i've seen the memes that have become really popular recently but i don't have any context for them because i've never seen any of those movies family f-a-m-i-l-y family do 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 that's the family i don't know what the fuck i'm doing <laughs> there you go chat that's the family song joseph hands a baggie to daisy yeah. I made sure to give you guys the edges. <laughs> Clearly the superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk off with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stocks. Mm. Though These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Yeah, you don't need it when you got family. What else? What else is there? That's all you need. That's all you need is family. Family. The higher the number, the less serious they take themselves. Oh, in the Fast and the Furious movies. Okay. So true. Corners and edges. Oh, see, I disagree. I like the middle pieces that have like more brownie. I don't I don't like the like the crust of the brownie, because it's usually like like a like a harder. Maybe I just don't make brownies correctly. <laughs> But yeah, I disagree. I like the middles. Yeah, I like the middles. But that's that's not a bad thing, Ratzel. Just think if we're ever if we're ever sharing a tray of brownies, you don't have to worry about me taking the end pieces. They're all yours. I want the middle pieces. Yeah, that's perfect. That's that's like the the perfect brownie symbiosis. Oh, 
Oh, you like to dip yours in milk? Ooh, that's a solid choice. That's a real solid choice. I can get behind that. Wait, what happened to the pews? Oh. Ernest spray painted his rapper's alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. I wouldn't have gone for young man and the sea, but I can respect that. Speaking in ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it. Although, sometimes I wish. Never mind. What? It's kind of silly, but... Do you ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around on a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity, fruity blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock, you know, basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song. Joseph, I think about this every single day of my life. Gotta head off to bed. Have a fantastic evening, Andrew. I hope you don't have, like, any Taco Bell-induced nightmares. I don't... Uh... <laughs> I'm I'm concerned for your the fact that you decide to eat Taco Bell and then immediately head off to bed. Which I mean I've done it before, so I'm not I'm not one to judge, but I know I know it doesn't always sit well with everybody. So I hope I hope nothing goes horrible in the night. But thank you so much for the raid and for hanging out and for for bringing positivity into into the chat. When Joe comes to see me, you and Runa should come up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. With our powers combined, we shall eat an entire tray of brownies and then go into a food. Oh, that sounds amazing, Ratzel. Uh, have I mentioned I'm allergic to chocolate? <laughs> that's not stopped me before, though. I will say that's not stopped me before. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, the bedroom right next to the bathroom. Ooh, vanilla brownie sounds fantastic. I love anything vanilla. Give me some vanilla ice cream and I'm just, I'll be happy for the rest of the day. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. Oh. One day, my friend, one day we'll all, we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some more church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. <laughs> Is that would that be considered just cake? I'm vanilla brownies sound good. Are there? I've never had vanilla brownies. Is that a thing? Hang on, I'm gonna look it up. I need to stop looking at food. Vanilla brownies. Oh, it's a thing. Oh, they look good. Okay, close that. Close that. They look so good. Uh oh, where's my? Oh, there it is. Oh, close that. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla brownies sound cool. I would try it without a doubt. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I need to stop looking at food. <laughs> Craig. Hey. He's going to be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself. To see if he has the resolve to refuse processed sugar. Hmm. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Oh. Craig jog jogs up on the... On to our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies, too. Probably won't be able to sell to the baby. She's impossible to read. Oh no, Craig's going to know that we've, we've been blowing him off! <laughs> Keeps trying to get us to go to the gym. God damn it, Craig. It all comes down to Craig. Oh. Hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. Would you be interested in one of our delicacies? Homemade brownies. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, well, here, we'll tempt him. You know, Craig, if you really wanted to, you could hit a couple of these stalls and craft yourself a brownie sundae. Get some soft serve. A brownie from your, your good friend Jay. I think there's a table down there that's selling freshly baked cookies hot out of the oven. Hmm. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Oh. That's a tempting offer. But I've got some chai mango pudding at home that I'm actually pretty excited about. I'm going to have to pass. Oh, we failed. No. Ah, suit yourself. The day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Boxed mix, huh? Ugh. 
Mary Saunter's on, up to us. She looks like she's she'd rather be anywhere else than here. Ooh. Nope, two thousands the most you can donate in a day. But that's okay, because then you still have points. Well, either A, you can save points, try mango pudding, <laughs> hook me up. I don't know if I'd like that. To me, that doesn't sound good. But I've never had, in, in my defense, I've never had it. So I, I'd be willing to try it. But my immediate thought is it doesn't sound good to me. But yeah, Sleepy, the limit is 2,000 points to the community challenge a day. So you can only do 2,000, but you could, I mean, you can A... Save your points for donating future days. B, you can buy packs of, of stream loot today. C, you could uh, I don't I don't know go to go to the flea market and sp spend your points on old knickknacks. There was really only two options. I don't know why I added a C. Oh, honey, yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is actually they're just brownies. Cute. Oh, and boring and safe. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes start over to me. Uh, What's the rookie doing here? Hey, uh, did wasn't it just like one night ago that I walked her home because she was wasted at the bar? I was just hoping to introduce Jay to the rest of the community. Ah. Uh huh. You get a load of this freak show. What? Uh? Weird folk is all holier than thou types. Mm. Don't you think, Jay? <laughs> Mary, Come on. let the kid answer the question. Uh, they seem nice. <laughs> Brady, this is this is my real solution to all awkward social situations. Or let me just stuff my mouth full of food so I don't have to answer. Oh, you're welcome, Sleepy. You're welcome for the advice. I'm really happy. I want to give points for a hot dog party. Ooh, I'd love a hot dog party. I would love a hot dog party. I would, I'd would i be down for a hot dog party anytime. Uh, but I'm going to go with they seem nice. They, uh, they all seem like they're really excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, hmm. Uh, Mary, can we talk about this later? Uh, oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest, hardest to keep his cool. Hmm. Can we please talk about this later? <laughs> sure thing, honey bear. Hmm. Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Uh. Hmm. Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm, I'm in charge of the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wad, if I may so, say so myself. Ah. Thanks. Hey. Now give me your wallet. What? Mm. Give me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Mm. Mary. Uh? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers to me. Ah. He's really good at it. Mary walks out without saying goodbye. Yeesh. So there's some fucked up stuff going on with them. <laughs> I don't think we want to put... I, like, I don't think we want to put ourselves in the middle of their shit. I'm I am really sorry about that. She's she really likes pushing your buttons, huh? Oh. Joseph shrugs. Hmm. No, marriage is perfect. Oh. You're ready to head out? Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps her into the car seat. Hey. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Hmm. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. Oh. Ha! Huh. I won't keep you up then. <laughs> Thanks for, for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also happy to eat brownies. Oh. Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a bit less free labor. And I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. <laughs> I know, but first, hang out domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Hey. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. Promise. I smile. I'd like that. Oh, oh and one last thing. Joseph to tosses a cling-wrapped brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. Oh. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph. 
Please don't leave me alone with this brownie. <laughs> nope, too late. I'm already walking away. But... Good one. Bye! Joseph walks up, up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, brownie. Oh no, we're eating that brownie. I force the brownie down my gullet, knowing full well that this will be my undoing. I will feel this later. Oh shit, we were supposed to save one for Amanda. <gasps> Uh-oh. We're gonna be in trouble. I step inside to find Amanda doing homework on the couch. Eh? Hey, father unit. Hi, child, that I'm required by law to take to take care of. How's homework? <laughs> it's really fun and educational. Really? <laughs> How long have you known me for? Right. Hmm. How is the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh. So So what? Uh? We are we are were there any extra brownies or did you maybe sneak one or Sorry kiddo. No dice. Mm -hmm. I feel Im immediate shame for scarfing that last brownie. Actually, I don't know if it's shame or just nausea from all the brownie, but it could be both. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, that's okay. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Mm. He did. I sit down next to her and, and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. Dad, tip number 85, be generous to everyone. Oh, how do we do? How do we do? Oh, our salesmanship was almost through the roof. How do we do? We got A. <gasps> we got an A. We did so well. Welcome. You've got dads. Oh, Craig, stop. All right, we better... What? How many dates have we gone with... With Craig, just one. Thank you, Sleepy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm right over for dinner. Here, we'll do dinner. We'll do dinner with Craig. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not going to the gym. But we'll go to dinner. We like free food. We're all about. We're all about that free food. That doesn't sound too bad. I could definitely go for free food. But why is Craig so apprehensive? Does he know something about Robert that I don't? Lily! Lily, how you doing? Is, is that people arrive? <laughs> Lily! How you doing? How's your, how's your evening treating you, Lily? That doesn't sound too bad. I could definitely go for... Oh, we read this already. I hurry up and reply before my dad brain can work itself into a, paran into a paranoia spiral. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. Craig and I decide to meet up before heading over to Robert's place. Whoa, Jones! Thank you so much for those 200 heart biddies. I really appreciate that, Jones. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you so much. Craig's waiting on my porch. Bottle of white wine in hand. Hey! Jay, boy, am I, boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise, man. Classy of you to bring wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not wine. It's sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Or at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm genuinely unsure if he was telling the truth or not. I can never tell with him. Oh. Thank God it's not just me. I never know. Mm -hmm. Why, why do you want Despacito? I'm pretty sure Despacito's copyright. We can't play Despacito, Sleepy. I'm so sorry. We can't play Despacito. As much as I would love to be able to play Despacito, we can't do it. <laughs> Me too, Sleepy. After all this talk about food? <laughs> After all these little rabbit holes we've gone down that have been food-related? Me too. He's so deadpan about everything. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave properly or iron his, sh iron his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two first. Bro. 
One time, I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. Oh, oh no. As much as I like glizzies. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Let me take a look, Sleepy. Let me take a look. Let me take a little look, see. Walk on. Walk on. Log in with Twitch. Uh. Where's the stuff to Twitch configuration? Walk on. Review. No, 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 sleepy. <laughs> well, I won't. It's not going to play out loud. It's going to play my headphones. Alexa's not going to hear it. I approved it. I approved it. Alexa's not going to hear it. It's going to play in my headphones. Yeah, I know. My immediate response was like, oh, if I if I approve that and he plays it, uh, Alexa's... Okay, she's not... She's going to hear her. And she's going to do the thing that I don't want her to do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in my... Oh, you're on cool. Yeah, you can only do it once a, once a day. Well, I use... Sometimes I use Alexa for, like, timers and stuff. So I, I don't want to... I don't want to mute her. I don't want to... I don't want to mute her. Sometimes I use her for timers and stuff. She's like literally right there. She's looking at me. Hi, hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> the Amazon, the Amazon AI is staring at me. And they're like, "What is this asshole doing?" <laughs> uh, yeah, Lex is kind of cool. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that she hasn't. All these times I've said her name and she hasn't responded once. Uh, there's not much different. Honestly, there's not much different. The only difference is that it's integrated with Amazon, so if you do a lot of Amazon shopping, it's kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, it was at the very top of the trash can, like, sitting above it. But still, if he were on trial, I think the jury would def define that as in the trash. I'd define that as in the trash in his defense. I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. I never oh. have. Well, yeah, I think we've all considered, but the difference is that Robert actually did it. True. Maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're holding ourselves back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if if you already have Siri, I don't see any reason for you to to switch over, Sleepy. Honestly, they're about the same. They're they're about the same. If if you have Siri already, they they do about the same thing. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell won't chime. Hmm, must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does Robert have a dog? I don't know. That's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second. Hmm. This is uncharted territory, Jay. If what if what if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? That'd be cool. Don't say that. We're not even inside yet. Oh. Finally, the door opens. Robert looks a little surprised to see me. I... Jay, I didn't didn't know you'd be tagging along. Oh. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Come on, Craig. Who the hell is Daddy Yankee? I don't... I don't know. Max volume is really loud. <laughs> He's on Despacito. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think that's the point, though, Billy. <laughs> I think Sleepy wants it to be really loud. Sleepy wants the neighbors to know that Despacito is the thing that's happening in his house. I can leave if there's not. No, it's fine. Come on in. No, Lily! Come back! Come back, we need you! We enter Robert's living room, which is surprisingly really nice. Super messy, but still nice. Make yourself at home. We can still hear barking from the other room. Hmm. I didn't know you had a dog, Robert. Oh yeah, that's Betsy. Have you have to put up with her? Put have have to put her up when guests are over. She'll calm down in a bit. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog is she? Mm. Wait, no, who's Daddy Yankee? Whoa, 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 wait, please, Lily, <laughs> please inform us. Who's Daddy Yankee? Is it like an artist? 
Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't do anything. Hey Siri. She just doesn't care. Half the time she doesn't care when I say her own name, let alone some other name. No, no, wait, Lily. <laughs> Who's Daddy Yankee? Pitbull rescued her from dog fighting ring a few years back. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I would probably have to take you both to the ER. Hmm. Craig and I make eye contact. He raises an eyebrow at me. Oh, okay. Nice. Anyway, dinner should be ready in a minute. Hope you guys have Oso Buko. Guys like Oso Buko. The sound of your ghetto. Yeah, is it rap? Is it rap music? Because we've already we've already discussed the fact that the extent of my rap knowledge were the the two videos that I watched prior to the freestyle rap, and also like like early two thousands Eminem. Robert leaves the room, presum presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Hmm. Was the dog fighting thing real, or was he kidding? I don't know. Bro. What's Oso Buko? I don't know. Hmm. Did he make up that word? Until I have Oso Buko in front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taking in Robert's living room. Oh, it's Hispanic club music. Oh, I've never... I, I, don't, I can't say that I'm familiar with Hispanic club music or basically any club music for that 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 point um yeah i can't i can't say that i'm a, a big club goer big party animal jay chili in the house uh i know what was that one song that one k-pop song that was real popular gangnam style that is is that considered club music i could get down to that are we about to get sawed? Mm -hmm. Nah, usually we wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one. Mm. Robert finally walks into the room, carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have din a dining table. Don't trust them. So we're eating here. Hey. Also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. Robert sets plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat. Maybe. Lots of sauce. I can make out some vegetables. I think that might be rice. But it could be pasta. Guess there only, there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Bro. Oh my god! I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender. And the risotto. I think that's what it is. It's so creamy. Hmm. Robert, this is really incredible. You cooked this? Mm. I fished it out of the dumpster behind a restaurant. Or at least I think it was a restaurant. Dude. Can you believe people just throw this stuff away? I almost gag. Hey. I'm kidding. I look over at Craig, who looks wary, but still has his mouth full. He gives Robert a thumbs up. Glad you like it. Oh. Where did you learn how to cook like this? Oh. Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decide to play along. You lived in Spain. Huh. After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe, crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple of odd jobs whenever I, wherever I could to scrap together some cash. Oh. Roberts, you were literally, literally like the same person. I don't believe that, Lily. I don't believe that. He looks angry. You don't look angry, Lily. Oh, there's a Scraggy. I love Scraggy. It's so it's so cringy that I love it. One one night I'm eating dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madrid. I go to pay and I realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. Hey. I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much they offered me a job. Why not, right? Started living with some distant relatives on my ma's side. <laughs> You're asking nicely. I'll I'll think about sleep because I think we do. We we may need more mods because there's a handful of my mods that just I haven't seen in a long time. 
So I will I will think about it, Sleepy. I won't I won't do it while we're live. If I do it, it'll be uh, it'll be off off the stream. But I'll think about it. The answer is probably yes. I want to look through my list of mods, and I want to the the folks that I haven't seen in a long time are gonna unfortunately get unmodded. And if you do it, don't okay. I won't tell you. It'll be a surprise. You can I'll, I'll let you be surprised. Because we haven't seen we haven't seen Deadly in a while. I I haven't we haven't seen Wilson in a while, and I'm a little bit concerned. I hope Wilson's doing okay. I haven't seen Wilson streaming either, so I hope I hope Wilson's doing well. It's a little bit it's a little concerning when you don't like somebody that you see in the stream like every night for like months, and then suddenly they disappear. Um, it's always a little bit troubling. You like surprises as long as they're nice surprises. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah, Sleepy. I... So that's that voice, um, that voice that does the like the little the little voice clips for Robert. That's that's Danny from Game Grumps. One hundred percent. My my mom surprised me with a new game called Fifty Two Car Pickup. Oh no, oh no, Sleepy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Over the course of two years, I worked my way up from busboy to sous chef. Learned a lot. Craig and I wait for for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back to the States? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a spe speakeasy for safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? Hey. Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore. But, but this food's so good, I kind of don't care. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It really is, to be honest. I wasn't expecting gourmet cooking here especially not served on paper plates uh -huh. i don't care about presentation if the food is good it should speak for itself this oso buko is screaming for itself mm. and paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up uh -huh. hmm hey is it bad if i ask for seconds mm -hmm. help yourself but save room for dessert i made the lemon berries saverin Whatever that is. Oh. Well, aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Hey! Surprises. Surprises. I, that's his voice. That was him talking, not me. <laughs> that is that is an old classic. 52 card pickup. <laughs> Robert Winks. You bet I am. Huh. You can come over for dinner anytime. Hey. Craig. Oh. Um, I'm gonna go get seconds. Me too. After consuming way more oso buco than my body could handle, and then really ensuring a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever sa saverin was, Craig and I decided to head out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. I'm making an attempt to be more social. Well... We're always happy to stop by if you want company. Especially if there's Os Oso Buko involved. Oh, hell yeah. That was kind of that's kind of nice. I, we were resisted spending time with Craig for a while. But that was kind of nice. Anytime I get paid from now on, I'm going to hide the money so one random day I'll be cleaning and find the money. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice little surprise. That's that's That, that would definitely be a nice little surprise. All right, so we've, we've dated everybody once. And we've also dated Hugo twice. So he can't... We've also dated Brian twice. Uh... Let's... Why don't... Let's go on a... Let's go on a second date with... With, with Robert. Let's go on a second date with Robert. He, he makes good food. I like food. He's, he's on my good list right now. Dad tip number two. It's never too early to invest in a personal IRA. Joseph runs a cult. Wait... Really? Is that is that where it's leading to? I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times, and Dad Brooks says he hasn't even read them. Haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. I decided to send him one last message, fingering that, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey man, I don't know where you've been. But we should grab a drink soon. 
I walk away from my computer because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah, I'll bake her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries. I thought we didn't know how to bake. I thought that was the whole thing was that we didn't know how to bake. I thought that was the whole thing. We, we, we couldn't help with the brownies because we didn't know how to bake. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie, it's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. Aw, oh, man. I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. I'm pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, why can't I remember what the secret ingredient is? Uh, more cherries! Oh, it's more cherries, duh. Being the most important part of a cherry pie, I truly believe that you can never have enough cherries. Let's turn the cherry dial to 11. Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art, and some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? Oh, I'll just wing it. Amanda's gonna be so excited. That kid loves a good pie. I have a set, a seat at the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops! What smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Huh. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. <gasps> yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. Hmm. What? What's your angle here? What? Hmm? Pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Uh, I've been leading a double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and aspiring astronaut and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back, and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. The pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the years we spent together, but a trade up is a trade up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza, Ibiza, Ibza, Ibiza. I don't know what that place is. His whole family screams, "Cold!" Yeah, there's some weird shit going on that I don't. I feel like we shouldn't get stuck in the middle of. That's that's the uh, that's the verdict I drew from the first date we went on with Joseph was that there's some weird shit going on with his wife. I don't know why are we going on dates with a guy that's married. This is this is a daddy dating simulator. Oh, look at that Jinto! Look at that Jinto emote! I love it! I love it! Remember? Oh, we read that already. Thanks for all the pie. We share a cordial handshake. Eh? I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Mm. Huh? What? Mm? Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh, that's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked the pie incorrectly. And you're currently, right now, trying to pass it off as a good thing? Mm -hmm. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you... Just eat the pie, panda. Mm -hmm. I cut us a few slices. We sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out of the sides and the buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Oh. Ah. Uh. What's wrong? Is it not good? Oh. Amanda winces and fans her mouth. <laughs> no, no, I just burned the heck out of the roof of my mouth. The pie is amazing. Ooh, how do <laughs> you make a glass like that? I don't know. There's one way to find out, Ransel. Let's have a let's have a science experiment stream. No, Lily! Lily, why are you leaving? Come back! Come back, Lily! Sorry for doubting you. Uh. 
I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. Why are you leaving? We made the perfect pie! This doesn't happen every day. It's like watching history in the making. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the whole house down. I got a few dad tricks up my dad's sleeve. Maybe a fa maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we are... We as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. What? Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink and put myself out. Pride will be my undoing. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications and we both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. Huh, hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Hey. Jay. Hey. Hey, Jay. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Ugh, oh, what is that? I was just on the edge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the dinging. My computer screen, illu screen illuminates the dark room. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what's happening on screen. Don't make me honk! I will honk! Get out here! I look out my window and sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. What poniard? Poniard in the chat! I open my door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey. I... Wanna hang out? I was kind of sleeping. Mm. That's no fun. Uh -huh. Come hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Oh. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. Huh. I mean, I don't mind. Right. One second. Oh. Robert's into us not wearing pants chat. He's into it. He's 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 into our, our pantsless shenanigans. I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and a jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Oh. What do we do for a job? That's my real question. Is what we, we bought this house. We don't seem like we work. We don't seem like we do anything except watch reality TV shows, uh, bake pies, and text other dads what are we doing for a living <laughs> what is our what is our career path in dream daddy ready oh hell yeah ratzel congrats on the poniard ready mm -hmm. hop in oh. i jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck I have to move a few empty cigarette packs and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. I... You... you like Tom Waits? Uh, Tom... Tom who? Wait, who's to... Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, alright. He lights a cigarette and cranks, cracks the window. We drive together in silence. So... Where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Uh oh, Robert. Oh, I hear you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice Robert's taking us to the highway. I told is Robert kidnapping us right now? Are we being kidnapped? Chat, <laughs> get us out. We're being kidnapped. To We're being kidnapped by Robert. Well, whatever I've got myself into, it looks like I'm in for the night. I settle into my seat and watch street lights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does, but there's something a bit more there that I can't just can't place. Uh, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Just peachy. Mm. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Just hang on, we're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not so sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car, and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out too. 
What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city's skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side I can see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. Oh. Oh. Um... What? <laughs> yeah, my thought exactly. I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? This is my little spot where I come to think. It's nice. You can you can see the whole city from up here. Really gives you some perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just kidnapped us. He brings us up here. He's like, yeah, this is this is where I go to do the business. This is where I do the business. Robert reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight, and I suddenly realize what it is. It's a gun! Oh shit, that's a knife. What? <laughs> oh. oh. Please don't stab me. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for that sleeping. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Because I was just reading it, and I wasn't... Like, as I'm reading it, it's sinking in. <laughs> So it was like a second after I read it, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Oh, I breathe a very, very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? What? No. Mm. Hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Uh, here, play along. Yeah, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Hey. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got the egg. Chat, we got the eggplants! Ha! Nothing gets past you, huh? Hey. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that opens and hands it to me. I'm gonna warn you, the last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? I... I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. I'm... I'm so many levels of irony deep and I've forgotten what humor is. He and I laugh. Have you ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. What did you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Mm -hmm. Jay, I will have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed both young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before you even tried it speaks volumes about your character. Huh. Rule number one for a knife fight, bring a gun. <laughs> that should be like rule number zero because it automatically, it automatically negates the knife fight. And brings absolute victory, unless you're, uh, in, unless you're John Wick, or unless you're fighting John Wick, I should say. Then no promises. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. <sighs> what I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground. Perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Huh. If you're fighting John Wick, bring up a, a power bring power arm and you might live. Might. I don't honestly, I think I think John Wick would, would still win. My money would still be on John Wick. <laughs> oh, you were in you were in you were in the new John Wick movie. Well, who were you in the new J John Wick movie? Whoa, 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 wait, I can't tell if you're being serious, Sleepy. What what did you do in the new John Wick movie? Were were you like an extra, like in the background? I can't tell if you're being serious. Oh, sleepy, sleepy. <laughs> this is this is why I have trust issues, sleepy. <laughs> the most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is gonna splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? 
Okay. <sighs> no. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hand. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. They are nice hands. <laughs> you can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. Oh, oh, but I like my hand. Oh, no, I like my hand eggs. Knife that wood. Uh-oh, knife that wood. Oh. 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 Okay. Uh, how do I knife the wood? Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh. Ah. Uh-oh. That's a good start. What is it? Uh, it's a pen. Here you go, Sleepy. I, I made something for you. Good luck writing with that. You made a highly dangerous weapon. There you go, Sleepy. I made something for you. All right. Here, we'll make something different. Maybe. Maybe it'll just be another pencil. Oh. 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 Tell me about this one. Uh, it's a popsicle stick. Now all you need is to carve up some wooden juice, wooden fruit, and a wooden freezer. Oh, we made a popsicle stick. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Oh, this is kind of adorable. Uh oh, this one's tiny. Oh, what's the story here? Uh, it's... It's a toothpick. You realize that you could have just picked your teeth with the knife. I don't. I don't know that I'm cut out for uh, for whittling wood. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I don't think we're 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 the savants of of wood whittling. Oh. Hmm. What's this? Uh. It's a. Oh, it's a chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. Oh, but I'm hungry. No, no, Lily, Lily, we're doing real well. We're doing really well. Oh. Nice form. What's it supposed to be? Uh, it's, it's a self-portrait. Spitting image of you. Oh, <laughs> a masterpiece. No, 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 no. Robert, Robert's, Robert's having a great time. He's having a great time. Oh, this is a good one. Interesting. What, what do you have here? Uh, chopstick. It's a stick. Oh, we made an ambidextrous chopstick. Well, this is a big one. This is a big boy. If you keep this up, you'll be wit a whittling pro in no time. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a duck. Maybe next time you can carve up some wooden bread bread crusts to feed them. Oh, look at the little wooden duck! It's a cool duck. <laughs> Makes a masterpiece. Yes. Thank you so much, Sleepy. Ah. Uh. Oh. Oh. Well, we're getting good. Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Uh, the spirit of the Mustang. How poetic. Yeah, look, the spirit of the Mustang. Oh. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. May, May might argue with you. May's made some really strong clips, Sleepy. I, I think between you and May, you're the, the two best clippers in the channel. Katie's also made some really good ones. Uh, May's not here. Oh, in the chat right now. In the chat right now, you definitely are. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's ca carving a smaller wooden knife. Ah, well, I'm distracted. The knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Carving. Uh-oh. Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying! I'm bleeding to death. Uh -huh. Robert finally looks over. I... He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this, does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a little red bandana. 
He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of antiseptic into the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. Uh -huh. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Mm. Make sure to keep the cut clean. It's oddly touching and... and a little sexy. I guess I'm a real whittler now. Uh. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Uh. Cryptids. Tons of them out there. You know? Cryptids. Like Mothman and stuff. Uh -oh. Mothman is bullshit. But yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Mm. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or at least I thought I was. There are, are things in these worlds that we can't possibly comprehend. Head in the bed. Have a great rest of your stream. Ratzel, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it so much. I hope you have a fantastic night's sleep. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. The Lurking Clipper. You'd make a fantastic barber. That is true, Sleepy. That is true. That would be the, a great name. Oh, although, I don't know. <laughs> the Lurking Barber. I don't know if I'd want to go to a, a barber that's just like lurking around the corner like with his little scissors. And like, ah, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm the Lurking Barber. <laughs> I think about my entire time in the city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. Huh. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Hey. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Oh. Second day, I get the idea into my head that we can hike, hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment. But hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start, start marching in the morning. Really? It gets a little late and we set up camp. But it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silence. Mm. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life, right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. <sighs> but there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be, too. And when I see it in the distance, mm -hmm. a man. But if something that didn't know what a man... If something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong. Big, arms too long for its body, black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Uh -huh. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her, but she's gone, into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night, and I don't think I've slept right since. Yeah, it's terrible. Wow, Robert. I... I'm so sorry. <sighs> They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about me ma about it makes my skin crawl. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Robert, real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, whoa, right? Whoa, <laughs> whoa! whoa. <laughs> I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strained my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away. I barely can make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Um, um, do you see that? Uh -huh. We should go. Huh? Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights, and we make a slow crawl away, back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. Oh, a slack off! Hell yeah, Sleepy! 
What was that? Uh -huh. The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve. Mm. Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. Really? We sit in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Oh. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been away, been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Hmm. Had, had to be around someone. You doing okay, man? I don't know. Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Mm hmm. Hey. Been doing a lot of thinking. It takes a long drag. Huh. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Hey. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them. But there was always a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held onto that kept me going. I... But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Uh... It must have taken a lot for you to want to tell someone, somebody like this. Hmm. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever... Hmm. Wish you were be a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret, or wish that I could have done better, but I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. Oh. It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter, and it seems so perfect. It isn't. Oh? At least you're there for her. I stare out the window at the blur of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. Hmm. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. Don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Uh -huh. Do you hate him? No, I used to, but after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about it all, about all the happiest moments in my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex, and he just wasn't there. <laughs> it hurts like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Bell Rouge, Rouge in prison. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> I turned and, sm turned and smiled at him. No, he was retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. <laughs> oh, we got those eggplants. Yes. We both laugh break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radi radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my, my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. Ah. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. He gets out and waves. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa! Where did you come from? Mm -hmm. I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Huh? I thought you were sleeping! Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. <laughs> you know the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda, Lang, you know what? It's fine. Oh. I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking toward her room. Hey, Amanda. Hey. She stops. I love you. Hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Hey. Night. I chuckled to myself, then finally decided to go to bed. Oh, how'd we do? Let's get that score. Let's get that score. How did we do? Give me that S rating. Give it to me. Oh. 
Oh, give me that S rating. Come on, show it to me. A! I mean, it's still really good. I'm still happy with it, but I wanted that S. I wanted that S rating. Welcome. You've got dads. Craig, I don't. Craig, when are you going to get the hint? I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym, Craig. Uh, we can't tape Brian. We've done two days with Robert. We've done two days with Hugo. I don't like Craig, but I guess... I mean, I guess we're going to do two dates with everybody. Now let's do... Here, we'll do a second date with... We'll do a second date with Damien. Once we do two dates with everyone, we'll decide who our, our final dad is going to be. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing my message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Hmm. No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment, folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, the dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads, Dear Jay, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the, mor the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, I, if you allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by a moonlit stroll would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, D. Blood March. Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Hmm? Wow. He's good. Hmm. So you're going to catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on Dad Book and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop shut. What? You have to write him back a real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Yeah. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Mm -hmm. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Mm -hmm. Find tickets to a show that you two, li two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. <laughs> Amanda and I hop it onto my laptop and peruse showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. Huh. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the in Inui of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Hmm. Nah, there's just lots of blood and vampire titties. Well, let's roll the dice. Eh? I purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down at the table with Amanda to try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. Uh, good morrow to you this fine eve. Not sure if that checks out, but it looks fine to me. Oh. What's next? I must confess of my amateur control of the written word. Oh. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Mm. Okay, we're, t we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. Nice. <laughs> Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. Uh... Let me get at that. <laughs> well, a strange turn of events, I find myself enamored of the situation at hand. 
Bring it home, Pops. I would very much enjoy your company. It would bring me great pleasure to accompany you to the cinema. Smooth, calling it the cinema is a classy move. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Namaste. And then I sign my name, my full name, fancier that way. J. Chill. Hmm. Is that okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. Damien, good morrow to you on this fine eve. I must confess of my amateur control of the written word, as well as my even more amateur penmanship. Your letter found me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. While a strange turn of events, I found, I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Namaste, J. Chill. <laughs> hmm. You spelled his name wrong. What? Hmm. Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. Uh. Now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? Yes. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Yeah. Amanda, Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... Ah. Here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Awesome. Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver it to his doorstep now, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Mm -hmm. I already called my guy. Mm -hmm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. Ah. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Mm. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helped me pick out a nice outfit and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah! I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it going to rain soon? Hmm. I didn't hear anything. What? Hmm. Oh, my. What? Regardless, the hour grows close. Hmm. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Uh -huh. Please allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ah, oh, my, oh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gag of, gaggle of other goth kids. Uh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. Uh. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Uh -huh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. What? You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Huh. Ha! Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends, and I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? <laughs> it's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. 
I wonder what's wrong. Is he, does he, like, get scared in horror movies? Is that what, what the big reveal is gonna be? He gets really scared. He re gets really scared at the horror movies. Oh, there's a purloin! Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping for armrest. Gripping his armrest. Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so, uh, excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. You're back from D&D. Hell yeah, Kay. How you doing? How is D&D? Tell us everything. Give us give us those D&D. Those D&D deets. Oh. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Hmm. I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Oh, interesting. Hmm. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? What? You must be joking. I love horror movies. Uh-oh. The lights dim for the film. Ah! <laughs> oh, nice try, Sleepy. Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. How are you, Joe? Okay, so they are on a quest to deliver supplies to their cousin. And on their way, they find out the cousin was kidnapped. <gasps> and he was keeping info from them. <gasps> oh, that's scandalous, Kay. That's really scandalous. I'm doing really well. You asked how I was doing. I'm doing really well. But that's really scandalous. That sounds really fun. That sounds so cool. That sounds like such a cool D&D &D sesh. Nice try, Sleepy. I am on to you. I'm on to you, Sleepy. Oh, no, Kay. Kay, that's Sleepy. Kay, it's, it's, it's Sleepy. I wish there were a ditto. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien, Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens when you leave, Lily. Everything descends in the chaos. Damien's scared. There's, there's fake dittos in the chat. <laughs> oh, your 12-year-old old niece, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> My 12-year-old niece stabbed... A bowling in the back of the head and twirled the knife and ate the guts like spaghetti. She thought she thought of that one on her own. A goblin. Okay, I was like, what is a bowling? A goblin in the back of the head. Oh, oh, your niece is a savage. Your niece is a savage. I don't. What did you put the second time? I don't even remember. A goblin. The title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Huh. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in the coffin. Yeah, that's even better. That's even better, Sleepy. That's even better. Okay, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get some uh make make your own custom command cards so that you can make some of these commands real. There's I don't think I don't think I have a ray I have a raised timer. But there's no there's no command for raise, I don't think. Unless it's just raise. No. It's just on a timer. It just pops up every like thirty minutes or something. Yeah. I could ma I'll make I can make a raise command. I didn't I made a timer, I didn't make a, a command for it. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and oh we read that. Awoken Awaken my coven. 
Two more vampires slide the tops off their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Oh, these are different people. Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy, it is time. I think I'm supposed to be a lady, but... Oops. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can make... I make the commands, okay? So they're not, like... They're not made by Twitch. I, I set the commands that work in the channel. There's, um... Is it spiders or spiders? There we go. That's that's Lily's favorite clip. <laughs> I think does panda still work? That's my favorite clip. <laughs> yep, books. Pulls up my 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 author biography. F adds Fs to the counter. M adds mat times I'm a masochist to the counter. Oh yeah, ghost pepper. Oh no, it did not work. Oh no, ghost pepper didn't work. Why didn't that work? Why didn't it work? It's turned on. Oh, the bot was disconnected for some reason. That's weird. Uh, how do I reconnect it? Uh, how do I... Here we go, connect. Yeah, I want it to always connect. There we go. Try it now, sleepy. For some reason, the bot disconnected that does the sounds. Ghost! You were working while playing a game. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Oh, we summoned you! <laughs> what game are you playing, Ghost? Well, yeah, it should work now. Cal! Which this is Meg there it Megan is. requested oh, yes, this specifically. Daddy. There it is. So what you're telling me, Ghost, is you love Caillou. Caillou is your favorite. Ghost, is Caillou a Canadian thing? None of us seem to know what Caillou is. Other than, like, the clip that I play all the time. Hey, Cal, how you doing? Yeah, it's the, the guy from Castle... We're romancing the guy from Castlevania. Isn't that impressive? Isn't that real impressive? You don't know if it... Uh, see, I've, I've never heard of it. I think it's, like... A kid's show? You watched it as a child? Did you watch it as a child? That's why you're evil. You're not evil, Sleepy. Alka Dracula. Bum, bum, bum. Except he's afraid of horror movies. The three look at each other and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. This rules. The trio of vampires fly off into the night. As foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. <laughs> ah, it is Canadian. That makes sense then. That's why I, I'm familiar with the name, but I've never like seen the TV show, if that's what it is. You watch Caillou and Total... I don't know what Total Drama is. It, maybe I'm just... Maybe it's just too recent for me. Maybe it's just too recent for me. <laughs> I'm so I'm so proud of your niece. Kay, make sure make sure that you let your niece know that some weirdo on the internet is really proud of them. Oh, it's from the 90. Well, I was I was born in 1990. Ghost, I was born in 1990. I'm a 90s baby. What is here? I'll click this. This is a Wikipedia page. This should be safe. Total drama. A Canadian animated comedy television series which is an homage and satire of common con conventions from reality television and premiered on the Canadian cable television's specialty channel Teletoon in 2007. Sleepy, I was already 17 in 2007. I wasn't doing a lot of cartoon watch in 2007. I was already 17. I would have been right inside of its demographic. Oh, I missed it. I'm gonna look. Wait, I'm gonna look it up. Caillou. I don't know how to spell it. 
There it is. Oh, oh, it was there. There it is. Caillou. Oh, it, it is Canadian educational children's television series that was first shown on Teletoons, both, both English and French versions, with its first episode airing on the former channel on September 15th, 1997. So I would have been seven. I would have been in the... But I don't know if it aired... Did it, was it like aired in the United States? Oh, so in the United States, it only released, it looks like it only released on video cassettes. And then DVD. Oh no, that's just home release. Wait, here, broadcast. With the first uh, Teletoons, the series was moved to tree, Treehouse TV. Caillou made its U.S. debut on PBS Kid on September 4th, 20, 2000. So I was already 10. I was probably out of the demographic by then. I was probably out of the of the demographic for, for Caillou when it aired in the United States. Uh, where, where where were we here in, in our, little, our little movie date? Thank goodness BTTV gives me a preview tooltip for links. <laughs> nice try, Sleepy. OBS does the same thing. It's on HBO. Gotta go, Ghost, please watch Veep. At least like the first two episodes. Wait, what is Veep? What is Veep? You got 2.7 thousand points. Uh, you can contribute those to our community challenge for the new the new stream loop pack if you want, Ziggy. Or you can buy yourself a stream loop pack. Did you get oh no, you got hotline. Oh no, poor hotline. <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure Kay did a fantastic job DMing. We get a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It's good to finally blood you. Ah! Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the camera. Ah. Free stream loop pack for Ghost Pepper. Hell yeah, let's get Ghost Pepper a pack of... of stream loop. Hell yeah, thank you, Kay. There you go, Ghost. You have a pack headed your way, hot off the presses, courtesy of Kay. Oh, and another one back to Kay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There you go. You got pack headed your back your way. Uh so the community challenge is for a a second deck of stream loot. So sort of like how you have multiple decks for multiple games ghost. I'm gonna have a chaos deck, which is gonna be all actions, uh all things that can affect me on the stream. Or things that I have to do. Uh, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to cost more channel points to buy these packs. But they're going to be considerably uh, considerably more dangerous. Considerably more dangerous. For like things that I'll have to do. And the way I'm doing it is as you contribute points. Which that reminds me. What are we, what are we up to? What are we up to? We're up to 12,000 points. Um, so once we hit 25,000 points, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop the first 10 cards for the pack. So I'm going to drop cards as we amass points in the challenge. The, the, the full pack will contain 100 unique cards once we're all, once everything's said and done. So the first, once we hit 25k, I'll drop the first 10 cards um, and then for 50k, another 20 cards. For 75k, another 10 cards. And then for every 25,000 after that, it'll be another 20 cards. Uh, up to the, the, the max, which will be uh, the final 100. 
one one card for percentage well that would be that would be 150 cards if it was one card for for every percent that we went up uh because it's a hundred oh for every percentage yeah basically sorry i thought you meant for every point or for yeah every every thousand points or whatever uh we're at 14k 14 lily thank you so much for the contribution and ghost pepper why I was AFK White. Alkard is afraid of. We're at a horror movie, and um, Al Alkard is afraid of. Alkard is afraid of horror movies. Uh, believe it or not. Damien screams again, reflexively gripping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. What? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. Huh. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got to an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try and make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Oh, tell! Oh, you better believe. Tell a dad joke. Where does the dog go when it loses its tail? What? Where? To the retail store. I yell that last bit a little too loud for a crowded movie theater, but I can see a smile form on Damien's face. Oh. Good one, Jay. Hmm. This motherfucker's dra yeah, but he's afraid. He's he's a scurred Dracula. Scurred. He's a scurred. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie, where Romulus Badblood and the General's wife embrace each other in the crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeating hearts. Ask what's happening. <laughs> You'd be so upset. No, why, K? Why would you be upset? Tell us, tell us your your reasoning for why you'd be upset. <laughs> I don't know. It's only to me. It's just a red screen. It's uh, it's it's kind of boring. It's just a single red screen. It was white in the beginning, so it changed color at least. The true vampire's curse is the friends we made along the way. Ah 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 ah. <laughs> Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. What? The film fades to black, and the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Carmilla, who watched the two from afar. Mm. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for th a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire Crusade 3. Evil must die again. More thunder. More ominous organs. The movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Oh, pop your tart. <laughs> That's the worst question to ask during a movie. Why is that? What if I'm confused? What if I'm like... So, we took a friend with us to see... Um, to see Endgame, and our friend had not seen any any of the Marvel movies up to that point. So throughout the entirety of Endgame, we had to explain who certain characters were and what was going on because they were so freaking confused. It wasn't even funny. It's the cheesiest movie. <laughs> He's a scurdy cat, Cal. We can't all be. We all can't be real brave. We can't all be real brave like, like us, Cal. We have to we have to acknowledge that there's 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 folks out there who are, are just they're just scared. <laughs> Carmilla in a vampire movie. Yeah, she's dating a man. Yeah. I don't know honestly I don't know if it was a man or did it say specifically it was a man? Or did I did I just give them a male voice? Problem with the MCU, it's got it's fancy continuity and it's cool, but it also means yeah. Honestly, I haven't watched anything Marvel 
um, cinematic universe related since Endgame. So all the things that are going on over at Disney Plus, I'm kind of like, eh, maybe eventually. But the longer it goes that I don't watch any of that stuff, the more overwhelming it becomes to think about going back and like watching through the backlogs of that stuff. So I can only imagine someone that tried to get into Infinity War and Endgame at that point. And then they were like, oh yeah, there's like 26 other movies to watch before. Oh wait, did did Spider-Man come out after? I thought Spider-Man came out before Endgame, Ghost. Or am I am I wrong? I did see the newest Spider-Man movie. Uh, far from Far from Home. I did watch the newest Spider-Man movie. I thought that came out in between Infinity War and Endgame. The second one came out. Oh, it came out after. Okay, so that's the only, I've watched. I've seen that since Endgame. I thought it, I thought that for some reason I thought that came out in between. I thought they dropped. Oh no, because you know what? Uh, Tony Stark was. You're right. You're right. Tony Stark was dead in it. It wouldn't make any sense for it to come out in between. Yeah, the MCU series aren't all that great. I've been hearing really good things about Loki. I've been hearing some fantastic things about Loki. seen thor the second half of iron man 3 and the new black widow i haven't seen black widow yet go or uh, sleepy saw black widow sleepy said it was pretty good i i don't really have an interest in seeing um black widow uh you enjoyed loki the most i've been hearing really good things loki was really cool but the last episode is basically like the last half hour of the matrix 2 i like the matrix i like the matrix 2 hot take the matrix 2 is my favorite matrix movie um, I haven't watched it since I was a kid, though. I loved it when I was a kid. Like, when it first came out, I loved The Matrix 2 because I loved all the little action scenes. Because as, like, as like a middle schooler, all those action scenes were like, Oh my god, it's so cool! And then you'll, like, Loki, my sole complaint of the series won't apply to you. <laughs> Again, I haven't watched the Matrix movies since I was in like high school. Maybe it was the last time I watched them. Whenever, whenever Revelations came out, the the third movie was the last time I watched them. Aren't they making? They're making a new Matrix movie, aren't they? I think it's supposed to come out soon. Black Widow was okay. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I do feel like it's a bit too mu too little, too late. You know, like she's already dead. Now they're trying to retroactively give her characterization. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel that, Cal. I can definitely feel that. I, I think it would have been better off as, like, a, another miniseries or something that would have just been kind of, like, over on the sidelines. Like, oh, if we don't care about this, oh, well. Okay, I don't think you're that bad at spelling. I'm very frustrated by how they handled Black Widow, and I think she'll see right through that i i think black widow the only reason black the black widow movie happened is because there's been a very strong push for strong female characters in comic book movies because for a very long time there weren't strong female characters in comic book movies and wonder woman did fantastic in the box office uh so that's honestly i think that's the only reason if, if it weren't for that fact, I think they would have just killed off Black Widow and that would have been the end of it. So if I'm movie, but you know, Endgame already happened. I, I honestly haven't really cared since Endgame. Endgame felt like the end of like a little, like the whole saga that I've been watching since I was basically a kid. And honestly, it's like, okay, that was my, my saga and now it's over, so... I'm going to move on to other things. Damien and I walked out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Hmm. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampirical lore. Just rewatch the I'm a Marvel and I'm a DC web series for the million time. What is that, Cal? I've never heard of that. <laughs> what is that? But here, so 
I, I know we're, we're like completely off track with playing the game here. Here's my question. They're introducing this whole, this whole plot line. Cause I, I think this whole plot line is that there's multiple, there's like multiple timelines and multiple realities. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's like the new story arc that they're moving into. Do we think they're going to bring back maybe not the same black widow, but are they going to bring back, like a Black Widow from an alternate timeline, and she's going to become a part of the main timeline. Is that what we think is going to happen? Is that something that seems like it's a possibility? I'll be—I think I'll be mad if they do, because it was a very emotional moment when Black Widow died. I'm going to keep playing, but I'll let y'all—I'll let y'all mull that over, because I feel like that's something they might do. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Huh. Come, the night is young. Let us s take a stroll. Hmm. Since the most powerful force in the MCU is money, that depends on how badly audiences want Black Widow back. Uh, I, I bet it depends on how well received the Black Widow movie is. Uh, which I think is what you said, because that would be money. Um... If if but if the Black Widow movie is received really well, I think I think they will probably think about it. It started out as a parry of the Mac slash PC commercials, and then the creators came up with a series to let the characters interact without the constraints of the parody. And then he added plot. And then he added serious emotions, and by the time you reach the recent episodes, Deadpool and the Green Goblin and Rorschach have all had entire character arcs, and it's the best. Ooh, that sounds really interesting. I respect your choice, but you couldn't pay me to romance. Oh, this isn't our this isn't our final decision, Cal. Uh, so you can go on two dates with all the all the daddies before we have to make our final decision so we want to go i want to go on dates i want to go on like the initial dates with everyone and get to see their like character development and everything before we make our final decision damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me still i'm enjoying the walk in the cool night air being alone here with damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater yeah, there's, I think, six? I think there's six daddies in the game that we can romance. Um, Damien is very, like, cliche Victorian, stuck in the past. He writes us handwritten letters, and <laughs> he has he has a, a garden in his backyard because, because floral arrangements are a way of sending secret messages, and in Victorian times, it was very common to maintain a large garden. Like, they're not going to bring back Iron Man or Captain America either. I I have... a uh, Captain America, there's no reason they couldn't bring back. I mean, they could... If they're bringing in multiple timelines and multiple universes and stuff, they could, they could technically bring back anyone at this point. If they bring back Iron Man, I will I'll I'll say it right now, I'll be done with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As much as I'd love to see Robert Downey Jr. come back and reprise his role, that was one of the biggest moments in Endgame and if they like negate that and do some bullshit to bring him back, I'll be like, "Nope, I'm done. That's it. I'm done with MCU." <clears throat> Speaking of I'm a Marvel DC in Endgame, the creator did what is effectively effectively a full audiobook following Steve's post-Endgame journey to put the past back to right. Ooh, with action figures and all. That sounds awesome. That sounds really cool. We did go on a date with... We went on a date with everyone at least once. Okay. We're working on going on a date with everyone for the second time. Although we're, we're, we've are we're been a little bit derailed and we're just kind of hanging out now. But they could do anything but read my longer message for... Your thought? Oh, oh, oh! I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, but glib, res well, glib response is the side. I don't think they'll bring her back. Infinity War slash Endgame was all about ending. Stop! Please stop scrolling, chat. Ending the Avengers arc and passing the torch to a new group of MCU characters: Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, 
I think Black Panther was supposed to be in there, but Rip, Chad, Bozeman, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, the, my concern, uh, my concern is that the new movies, uh, and they may, they may let it slide for a little while because of, they're like, oh, COVID's going on, people aren't going to the movies, people aren't necessarily wanting to leave their houses and to a actually do this stuff, which I think Disney Plus is probably helping them a lot with that. Um, so they may let it slide for a while, but if if the new movies are suffering and people aren't going to see them and they're not interested in going to see these new characters that they're bringing in, that's when I'm afraid that they're going to be like, well, these other movies that we did a long time ago did really well. Maybe it's time to bring these characters back into the, the continuity. Oh, no, Kay, you're falling asleep. Get some sleep, please. Get a good night's sleep. I very much appreciate you hanging out, but you got to get a good night's sleep. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow playing Mass Effect 2. So go get a good night's sleep, and we can we can all hang out again tomorrow. Have a fantastic night, Kay. I very much appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out. I didn't see Endgame, and I don't have any desire to, but respect Random Guy a lot. Is, is Random Guy the guy that does the, the Marvel slash DC stuff? Is that who you said the creator of that was? Oh yeah, no worries. No worries, sorry. I had a feeling that's who you're referring to. I, I would recommend Endgame. I know you said you don't have an interest in seeing it, but I definitely recommend it. I think it's I think it's a solid it's a solid movie. Um but I think that's like honestly I'm kinda like, uh eh, unless they do something really crazy with with the next Doctor Strange movie and the next Spider Man movie, I'm kinda like, uh eh, I'd prefer they go back to just the standalone movies at this point. It's just some random... I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up either later or tomorrow. Because that sounds really cool, Cal. Lovely night, isn't it? Oh. As lovely as the company, yes. He thinks I'm lovely. Damn. Okay. Here comes the smooth response. Oh. <laughs> look at how smooth these responses are. Thanks. <gasps> no problem. Hmm. Cru crushed it. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Mm. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a ce cemetery. What? Are we going in there? Oh. A little bit of Victorian flavor, Jay. Trust me, he's afraid of horror movies, mm. but he's, he's we're going into a cemetery at night. He's afraid of like cheesy vampire horror movies, but he's like, nah. We go into we go into the cemetery. We're gonna go, we're gonna go whip out the Ouija board, the Luigi board. I I'd be all for some solo movies, Ghost. I would love to see some more solo movies. They had their they had their little run of doing all the the big team up movies, and I think it's time for some more personal. Uh, solo movies, which is what I think. That's what I think. I'm 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 a big DC fan. I kind of rather DC to Marvel, comic book wise. I think DC needs to needs to pump the brakes on their plans to rush right into the Justice League. And that's that was my argument back when the Justice League came out. Was they went too fast? They needed to do some solo, like character building stories. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest the hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this this is strangely romantic. Ah. Doing Justice League. Yeah, yeah, that was the biggest problem. Is they were trying to create they were trying to build character while also trying to tell like a broad story. And I haven't watched the Snyder Cut yet. I've I've heard favorable things about the Snyder Cut that it really improves on a lot of stuff, but I have not had a chance to watch the the Snyder. I haven't had a chance to put what is it, like five hours, four hours, five hours? 
I haven't had a chance to put that much time aside yet to watch the Snyder Cut. <laughs> did did you not like did you not like Aquaman Ghost? I kind of liked Aquaman. The Aquaman movie was pretty solid. I loved the Wonder Woman movie. The Wonder Woman movie is fantastic. I have not seen the new Wonder Woman Wonder Woman movie. I've heard it's terrible. I've heard it's really bad. I haven't watched it yet. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Wait, where are you, where are you hiding that? Uh. Under my cloak. Oh, right. Damien unfurls the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheese. Where is he keeping a whole picnic basket through the movie? <laughs> you like Aquaman? Oh, ghost, do tell. What was the reason? What was the reason that you liked Aquaman? <laughs> I think we're all curious now. <laughs> I've never seen Battleship. I've never seen Battleship. Don't worry about it. <laughs> all right. I won't ask about I won't ask about your secret picnic baskets anymore, Damien. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural, rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard? But you had trouble handling a scary movie. What? I... I wasn't. He sighed deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared in that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just have never been good at those. I just feel as if, because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films. So I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I, I would have suggested another movie. Hmm. It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Uh. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. <laughs> Watch the honest trailers for Aquaman. Ooh, okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll make a, a mental note to watch that. I haven't watched an honest trailers in a very long time. I used to watch those all the time, and it's been years since I've watched one of those videos. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. <laughs> to sit amongst generations of those who came before us. To be truly alive in the midst of so much death brings me great comfort. <sighs> death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night. Well, you're not alone, but I actually feel very peaceful. <sighs> Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What is that? Oh. <laughs> this motherfucker. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Hmm. It notices us. I'm par paralyzed with fears. It begins lumbering slowly toward us. Its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid as and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer, moving faster. Oh. Woof. Huh. Oh. Uh. It's a dog! Oh! It's kind of adorable. Oh my god, it's adorable! <laughs> yeah, this game definitely does have a couple. <laughs> you are not wrong, Cal. You are 100% not wrong. Look at how adorable that dog is! As, as it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest-looking Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its, its owner toward us. Huh. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Hmm. What a beautiful dog! Hey! We both look up, not expecting to see. Thanks. Hmm. 
Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Oh. Hunting cryptids. Hmm. What? Hmm. What? Hmm. I didn't know you had a dog. Uh, yes, we did. We were at dinner. It is. There's so many. So I love this game. I adore this game. is is amazing. But we we had dinner at his house, and the, he locked the dog in the bedroom to keep it away from us. <laughs> this isn't my dog. Mm. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her, and now we're walking around the graveyard together, mm. hunting cryptids. <laughs> Damien and I share a look. Uh, May I give her a treat? Oh. Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. Oh. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I... My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Hmm. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Oh. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. Hmm. I, uh... Think a think big dogs are nice too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. Huh. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. I love dogs. I, I absolutely adore dogs. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Ah. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Jay, if you'll allow me, it would bring me much joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a, fo a folded monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. Uh, use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. Uh, I'm gonna wave this at passing. None of these are good choices. These are all terrible choices. Uh, gonna wave at passing ships? Uh, Alright. <laughs> I approve. Oh, he liked that. Huh. Damien shuffles his feet. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. <laughs> it's nice to feel so accepted. Damien gives me, gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Ah, uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. <sighs> like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Huh. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? <laughs> no, I was just, uh... Hmm. Okay, yes, how was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. <laughs> Told you. But, as it turns out, Damien is sca- huh. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep that between me and Damien. Sc scary cool. Yep, he's so cool it's scary. Nice save, Jay. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Hmm. I think I'm misremembering that. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can you be so sure you're not a werewolf? Hmm. Amanda's eyes narrow. Uh. I don't trust you. Nor I, you. Hmm. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. Anyway, I'm calling you for the night. Don't stay up too late, will you? Uh. 
I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. <laughs> it was the doofy. Maybe it was the doofiest werewolf ever. <laughs> it could have been the doofiest werewolf in the history of werewolves. Oh! I'm sensing a oh! romance between us. Oh! Oh! A chemical romance. Oh! A chemical romance between What's us. Band? <laughs> Who did the voice for Damien? <laughs> Wait, I want to know who did it. Was it, was it someone from? <laughs> Look at all those points. <laughs> Listen, Craig. Craig, you need to you need to get over yourself. We're not going to the gym with Craig. I don't care what happens. That message over there is gonna stay on red <laughs> until until the day Craig dies. Because we're not going to the gym with Craig. Who did the Who did the voice voice of Damien in Dream Daddy? Oh, I don't know who. Oh, it must be somebody. That's not anybody from the the game grumps. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, they they got they must have gotten some professional. I was curious who that was because that voice was really funny. <laughs> uh, your immediate favorite is Matt or Brian, just based on appearance. So there's there's a long running joke. And Cal, I don't know if you know our friend Billy Reds, who also streams. Um, there's been a long-running joke that Brian is actually alternate reality Billy. Um, so we've been calling Brian Billy for the entirety of our playthrough, because he kind of looks like Billy. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Marbles! Although he doesn't he doesn't play marbles nearly as much as he used to. <laughs> My favorite is Hugo. I, re I, got a, I got a thing for Hugo. That's right, I've not watched. I've not watched Jail's Marble Runs. Oh, I've, I'm a failure. I'm a fraud cow. I said I said months ago I was going to watch that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Joseph looks like Soldier 76. You're not wrong. He kind of does look like Soldier 76. You're not wrong. I also, I kind of like Matt. So I think like uh, Matt, Brian, and Hugo are the three that I, I really like. Uh, who have we not gone on two dates with yet? So Craig, we've only gone on one date. And I think Joseph? Which Joseph, we low-key thinks, runs a cult. Because he's like a pastor, and it's really creepy. He's also married, so I don't know why we're romancing him. Uh, I feel like we're, we're putting ourselves into a, a bad situation. Alternate universe, where he's Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, I think I think I'm gonna wrap up here for the night. I don't think I'm gonna start another uh, another. How do we bring up the? Oh, that's the wrong button. How do I bring up the the save menu? I don't think I'm gonna start another uh, another date this evening because it would take more than the the 15 minutes I was planning to go. That's why people call the game homophobic or something, because Joseph had a cult joke ending. Oh. Oh, see, I don't... Oh, so that may have been somebody that knew... That knew the endings. I don't... We haven't gotten any endings yet. But, I mean, most of the game is very joke-heavy. Because, I mean, it is made by... It is made by the game grumps. So, it is, it is very humor-heavy. Uh, Pokemon Unite is the new, uh, it's the new Pokemon MOBA that's free on the Switch. I think it's free on mobile also. Uh, it's a Pokemon MOBA that just came out last week. It's the first MOBA I've ever played. It was pretty cool. It's very, it's very, uh, microtransaction heavy. So that's a downside, but I mean it's a free game, so I guess you can't complain. MOBAs usually are very microtransaction heavy, bro. You know it's gonna be. Wait, wait, Malexi, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm 
I'm so happy that you're here, Malexi. I really am happy that you're hanging out and that we got to meet you. I'm gonna switch over because we're this is where I'm gonna wrap up for the night. I might hang out for a couple minutes, but this is this is where this is where we're gonna wrap up gameplay for the evening. Oh, thank you so much, Martian. Martian, were you here earlier for my explanation of what the the chaos pack's gonna be? Welcome back, Martian. You made it just in time for, we're going to hang out for a couple minutes and then we're going to raid somebody. Okay, so the the Chaos Pack is going to be the the first official uh, deck expansion on Streamloot for us. So I'm able to have multiple decks on Streamloot that you could you could choose from when you're buying packs. Um, so we're gonna make, I'm going to make a second deck that's going to be all action cards all the time. So things like the Blindfold cards or the, the Instant Death cards or... Um, the Pokemon cards that make me do stuff in the Pokemon games. It's going to be all actions, and they're going to be uh, some really, some really significantly ramped up actions to 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 make things really, really difficult on myself. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole new pack in the way I'm handling it. So you just drop some points. Let's see how many points we're up to. Uh, we're up to 15k. Uh, so when we hit 25k contributed, I'm gonna drop the first 10 cards in the pack. I'm really glad we did hit. I was concerned that we were gonna hit the 25k within the first stream, um, and I don't I don't have the cards prepared yet. So it's gonna be like mm, we're gonna have to wait until next stream, but. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start brainstorming the cards, and I'll have ten cards ready by the next stream. Like, ideas for them ready. Oh, no worries. You can only, you can only contribute two thousand, uh, per stream anyway. So you can't, you can't contribute more than two thousand a stream. Um, and we have thirty days to get all the way up there. At twenty-five thousand, I'm gonna release the first ten. At fifty thousand, I'll release another twenty. At seventy-five thousand, I'll release another ten. Um, at 100,000, I'll release another 20 cards. At 125,000, I'll release another 20. And then at, at 150,000, I'll release the last 20. So there's going to be uh, 100 cards initially in the Chaos deck. So it'll be like a slow... I'll slowly release them as we're hitting goals in the, in the community challenge. So I'm doing things a little bit differently. I think this might be a lot of fun. That way, even if we don't hit the max 150 which i'm 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 almost positive we will considering we're almost to the the first 25,000 we're already at 50 15,000 on the first stream that's live and it's going to be live for 30 days um i i have no concerns that we're gonna we're gonna hit the total we also we also hit 150,000 for chat rates a story in half a month last time so i have no concerns that we're we're gonna hit the the total but I'm definitely going to save some of the most brutal cards for the the last drop. So the last the last 20, the last 20 cards, I'll save some of the most brutal ones for that. Just to add some extra incentive to keep adding more, like to keep contributing your points even though the deck will be will be out. Well, some of the cards in the deck will be out as of the the 25,000 mark. Sleepy got yeah yeah you you definitely were very generous with your channel points today for Sleepy which I'm sure Sleepy really appreciates I'm sure Sleepy really appreciates the points he also got a, a redemption for I think a free pack and then a free gift pack but yeah I'm sure Sleepy really appreciates it even though I know Sleepy breaks down like ninety percent of the packs that that he gets which is which is fine he can save up for whatever he needs. You're really busy. No worries, Martian. That's why I appreciate so much that you stopped by and that you're lurking. I'm so happy that you're that you're here and hanging out. The fact that you're so busy and you're 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 working really hard with your school stuff, yet you still find time to stop by. I very much appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. So thank you so much, Martian. Who uh who would we like to raid tonight? Who's live that we can raid? Let me take a peek on Twitch. No worries, Martin. Thank you, Martian. Thank you for, for always being such a, an integral part of the community. We very much appreciate you. All right, let me hop over on to old Twitcheroonie. Twitcheroonie and see who is live right now. 
because we're gonna raid one of our lovely wonderful streamer friends let's see who's live uh so rainmaker's live again we can we can raid rainmaker again uh cameron i haven't raided cameron in a while oz oz is live there's not a ton of folks that i know that are live does anybody in chat have any recommendations of any friends of theirs that are live right now that they'd like to raid yeah twitch -a on the, over on the old the old Twitch Rooney, they should rebrand. Forget Twitch Twitch.tv. It should be Twitch Rooney.tv. You got one, Colonel Gaming. Let me take a little peek. Let me take a little peek and see. Colonel Gaming. Oh hell yeah, we can definitely definitely read Colonel Gaming. What are they playing? Seven Days to Die? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'm all about that. Colonel Gaming it is. Make a new, a new streamer friend. Because we're all about, we're all about making new new friends and reaching out and bettering the community. So hell yeah, Colonel Gaming it is. Thank you so much, Martian. Oh, this has been a ton of fun. I'm glad that we got back into Dream Daddy, because Dream Daddy is a lot of fun. I really like Dream Daddy. We'll probably be able to get maybe one more, one more Dream Daddy stream out before we decide on our who, who our final daddy is going to be. Oh, Ghost, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic evening, Martian. Thank you so much, and thank you for, for stopping by. Thank you for those packs for, for Sleepy, who I'm sure really appreciate it. Thank you for contributing points to the Community Challenge. I'm really excited to get the the Chaos Pack out there, because uh, I, I, I kind of love when folks use the cards to fuck with me in the games because it's really fun <laughs> i know a lot of streamers get really annoyed when their communities do that kind of stuff but i genuinely enjoy it <laughs> Ooh, carnivine oh martian i battled sleepy yesterday in pokemon i don't i don't know ghost why did they get annoyed <laughs> <laughs> Why did they get annoyed, Ghost? <laughs> oh, Martian, I battled Sleepy in the Pokemon game yesterday, and I I kind of kicked his butt, and I felt really bad. Sleepy, I don't know if you're here. I forgot about that until just now. I'm so sorry for how badly I kicked your butt yesterday. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I give everyone a hard time, Ghost. I feel like I just I just universally dish a hard time out to everyone. Well, look at those look at those adorable little aliens. Look at those adorable little aliens. You will, Martian. I 100% know that you will. I know that you will. You have some incredible Pokemon. You have some incredible Pokemon. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start the raid countdown. We're gonna Yeah, this is uh this is ATM Zero Andrew, our dear friend ATM Zero slash Andrew slash Dad, who's also a member of the Beardy Bunch, which is the podcast that I'm a part of. Um, this was the shirt that he released as a special edition for Pride Month. Um, it's no longer available, but all the proceeds during Pride Month went to a charity, the Trevor Foundation, I believe. If I if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, I unintentionally wore this shirt on a on a on the day when I was playing Dream Daddy. I had I didn't even think about it. I just threw it on and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fitting for this game. But I definitely didn't do it on, on purpose. I wish I could I wish I could say I did. <laughs> we also did a whole a whole episode of the podcast this week about visual novels that just dropped today. And then I played a visual novel and I was like, huh. It's almost like I planned this, but I really didn't plan it. All Pokemon are incredible. Evil Conquered Conkledur. Hey, eh, I don't mind Conkledur. I'm not organized. I'm definitely not. I have like moments of of like inspiration where I'm like, oh, this would be a cool idea to do. Um, but usually they're like last minute things that like even the even the chaos pack. I was in the shower yesterday, and I was like, ooh, this would be a really... All my good ideas come to me in the shower, by the way. 
<laughs> I don't know if anyone else has that. I think it's a common thing, but all my good ideas come in the shower. I was in the shower and I was like, ooh, the chaos pack. That'd be really cool. Because it would be all really, really bad things. And I can make it cost more channel points and they can be guaranteed to get like things to fuck with me. Uh, yeah, while washing my hair. Washing my hair. It really... I Like, I, I really invigorate the scalp. <laughs> I just invigorate the scalp so much that it brings out... It brings out all the ideas. It brings out all those latent ideas that normally are... Um, usually are buried beneath the surface of my, my consciousness. No, it's... it's it's the scalp cleansing, scalp cleansing inspiration. <laughs> scalp cleansing inspiration, that's what it is. Trust me, Martian, that's what it is. All right, I'm going to start the raid countdown to new friend, Colonel Gaming. Thank you for the recommendation, Martian. Let's start that countdown. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out. I really appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to start Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2, which means we'll get to... We'll finally get to customize our Shep, since I missed out the first time, which I think that's the part of it I'm most excited about, is to customize my Shepard. Uh, so we're going to start Mass Effect 2 tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friday, we're going to be playing Pokemon. I'm also going to drop the new stream schedule for next week tomorrow. So uh, look forward to that sometime in the afternoon. I'm going to drop the new schedule. Which will be another seven seven straight days of streaming, streaming goodness. <sighs> this has been fun. I really appreciate all of you stopping by, hanging out, all the lurkers out there. Thank you for lurking and helping out the community. I really appreciate that. More Thick Clan members on Friday. Hell yeah, I'm really excited for it. Hopefully no, no Pokemon casualties. But I will see everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow for some Mass Effect. See y'all then. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Mmm, chili hungry.